play this with conference will now be recorded. And so people say, well, what is the real issue? I ask people, what's the good news? And I end up going on, they're just giving opinions, what they've heard on the last video at church. And, and there's some truth in it, probably a lot of truth. But the real thing is, the gospel is Jesus, the creator. That's it. Come in here. Living, <laughs> you want to call it beneath himself, but loving us so much that he died for us. Not the point that he's trying to woo us in and say, oh, I'll die for you guys. That, that's how much I love you, love you. Love. No, no, no. He says, I'm the creator. I don't have to do this. And I'm only doing it once. I don't need to do it twice. And if you accept what I've done for you and you recognize how much I love you and how bad you've had it off and know that you're going to hell, I'll reach out my hand and say, not guilty, because I've just turned you into my spirit, not the earth, into my spirit. And now I can fill you. I can make you into a new creation and I can fill you with my Ruach HaKadosh without killing you, okay? You don't have to do all these ceremonial things to come near to me. I even ripped up a four inch thick curtain from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, so that you could have access through me. And I'm the only way you gotta be obedient to what my word says and my character how do you know anybody's character? If you're in a gang, how do you know what the guys in the gang, who's what, 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 what bad or good? How do you know? You spend time with them. They do good things, they do bad things. You know, their, their likes, their dislikes, why? You spend time with them. You spend time. Uh, you're in the military. They, People come from all over the world, whatever your rank, from nothing to, to five stars. You, you have to spend time with people. Oh, yeah, Colonel so-and-so, he, he's, wow, you know, dumb as a rock. How do you deal with that when he has people alive? Well, you've been around and learned. If you trust God somehow, some way, he'll work it all out. And even the people that you would never put in charge of, anything yet god knows when you go to him and they turn out to be the the best zealots there are so if you're reaching in yourself to figure it out that's what what you're really saying is i want to be god of my life even when you're on the street you're ready to uh, a minister friend i missed ministered with uh, a young man uh, standing on top of a building here, I know where he lived, uh, maybe 13 stories up, because his dad was busy in business and neglecting him, didn't have any food in the deal. He went up to the top to jump off the roof. But because he'd been, uh, he says there's nothing there. And uh, he'd been to church, but uh, he hadn't given it. So the long story short, he didn't jump. He gave his heart to Jesus and uh, God impressed him to get into the ministry, which he is to this day. Now he's in Canada. But, uh, okay, he was a young man. And so he came over to one church I was uh, uh, ministering at, a Chinese, uh, English side of a Chinese church. And uh, there were a bunch of Chinese businessmen young businessman about his age and he told the story about how he wanted to commit suicide and jump off the thing and why he did and all this kind of stuff and he said uh, does anybody want to know how to have the love of God and, and make it through every situation and all of these businessmen raised their hand said I want to receive Jesus wow I've been ministering a whole different way for months. But what happened? It's just the bottom line is, do you want to meet Jesus? You know he's the creator of the world. 
I don't care what you're into. Your spirit knows it. I never met one who didn't know that. They might not know what his name is, might never heard him, but they know who they're looking for. They know something's missing. So do you want to meet Jesus? Really want to know about him? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I know about him, and then I'll, sh then, then I'll show you where I looked so you can find Jesus and get all your, you know, your things out. Are you going to get all your prayers answered the way you want? Absolutely not. It's going to take you from being God of your life, which you're a miserable failure at. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. It has nothing to do with it. I don't care what your job is. I don't care if your arms are chopped off, not, uh, you, you're, what color, uh, what your teeth look like. I, I don't care. He has your spirit. And, and your, your spirit was going to go into hell forever. And it was made for angels. And you don't, I wouldn't even believe me. I want you to look it up. Do you want to meet God of the universe? Do you want him to be the Lord, the master, the, the final say, the one you believe? Uh, uh, you'll lay your life down to, in obedience, even when you disagree in your mind that it's happening? Well, that's pretty radical. you got to be radical. Whatever step you take, if it's a step towards God, he'll take with that. Okay, so they say, yes, I'd like to be born again. Whatever the reason, I don't try to figure it out. I usually fail when I, I try to use my head. And I say, yes, I would. And they say, okay, here's how you do it, Father. In Jesus' name, I, I, I know I can't. I've been a miserable favor of mine. I was going to hell, and, and, and I'm just separated from you. I don't know anything about you. And so I'm going to accept you as Lord and Savior that you died for me. So I don't have to suffer the consequences of, of disobedient with you in this life right now and forever. And whatever I've done, you'll lead in uh, that's bad or wrong or going to hurt me. Uh, you gave a promise. You'll give me life and, you, and, and you'll show me how. However that is, I'm going to do it. The prisoners who's, who, who receive like that, they're not asking to get out. They're busy witnessing to everybody in the jail. Everybody knows it. There weren't these people who, who the, the day before would have put, put a, 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 a knife in their, in their side with no compunction at all. Yet now, yeah, he's following Jesus. They know that. Maybe some do get killed. I don't know. I'm, I'm not judging, but I, I'm, I'm just talking about true stories. I know. I know the people. Because they're changed. Everybody knows it. You don't have to figure it out what denomination that that's just a way of positioning yourself or understanding what they believe but it's very little paul in the book of acts 17 years yes he went to a church or you know a synagogue or assembly that's all they had they didn't have any churches it was all the jewish uh, assemblies or assembly of a group of people okay and the so-called chosen people, like on a basketball, I choose you, 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 and you. Maybe you know what they can do. Maybe you don't. You just choose them. And he certainly said, in the, if you read the, the Old Testament all, you didn't choose them because they were great or good. It's because they were stiff-necked, hard-hearted, opinionated, everything else. But there were a few who were looking for God to do it his way in the face of all things. And they tested, they stumbled, they made mistakes, but they always went back to God because they knew his character. That's what the, the patriarch David was uh, all about. He just kept going back to God. What, not for two months, six weeks, poor baby? No, 20 years. He even faked being crazy. But I'm not basing it on David. I'm basing it, and, and God said he, he, he loved him. Why? Because he kept going back to him, and, and he knew he should pay the price, and that God is merciful. If he put it in man's hand, no, he's going to be ground into powder or, or tried to be manipulated or whatever. He didn't want that. And, 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 and if he were living today, he'd be crushed by all the pressure. Uh, oh, look, you caused 22,000 
people to die because of your stubbornness to, to, to uh, uh, number them. But what we don't understand is people are killing people all the time. Same thing. In your disobedience to God, somebody's getting hurt. The enemy opening a door here and there. Oh, well, I'm too bad. I can't. No, 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 just stop it and go the opposite direction. That's repentance. Hello, do it God's way. You know his character, follow his character. You want to be like him. He doesn't want to be like you. You're his creation. He wants you to be like him. He made Adam out of dirt, humus. He didn't call him humus kind. He called him mankind. It's after a mirror image, but he said, Jesus said, I, you know, I'm the second Adam. I'm the one of hope. I'm the spiritual one. I'm the real one. They didn't want that. They wanted a human one that they could disagree with, argue, get mad at, blame. The main thing is blaming, not taking responsibility for your actions. Hello. Hello, policemen and, and uh, uh, firefighters and, and military. You got to take responsibility for what you do and there are consequences but with god he'll make a way out and if it doesn't happen in this life it will happen for eternity but if you don't believe god don't know his character you don't even know what eternity is you're not even looking for heaven you're just looking to get what you can whatever con job uh makeup deal uh delusion you want to deal just to feel better that's what what the enemy is all about. That's what all the fallen natures are just just to feel better. This is all there is. Let's just feel better. Well, what about this group? No, just follow what the Holy Spirit does, and you'll across the board. It doesn't matter. He'll bring people who talk about the good news. If you believe and follow and trust Jesus, His character, who He is, read His Word, and all of that. He'll explain everything. And if you don't understand, you'll still trust Him. If He orders you to go into battle, you'll still do it whether you want to argue or not. But the reason why they argue a lot of times is because they want to make sure that you believe what you're doing and you tell them the truth. What do you mean? A good police uh, person or a commander is going to tell you, yeah, you're going to go in there and you might die. That's the truth. If you do it this way, we'll be with you, give you all the support you have, but you got to be there. And, and do your job. Be obedient. And if you die, you die a hero. If you run the other way, we might even shoot you because you will affect everybody else around you. That's what he has against cowards. Those who don't want to speak the true gospel. And if you mess up and do it in ignorance, he doesn't pound you. He, he just gently corrects you. But if you know what you're doing, that's a different thing. That's iniquity. So what's there going to be? A harsher punishment. Oh, the law and the punishment's done. Yeah, the punishment's done away with. And when you're obedient to law, you don't have to be afraid of it. You're obedient. And if you cross the line, you repent. Be willing to take the consequences and say, hey, because we're not in heaven yet. Okay. But if you're born again, walk in the spirit, you do it ignorantly or whatever, God, and you're trusting him, he knows. He'll deliver you the most screwy, upside down, unreligious way you can believe. Case in point, one, one fellow in the Philippines, uh, he killed, I don't know, he was a murderer before he got Jesus inside the, uh, the camp there. And he did change. He, he painted these wonderful murals inside the prison and everywhere. And uh, I mean, the, everybody was. Uh, asking for him to have clemency and, and actually to be let go out of prison. or And, and uh, uh, they went to the president and, that, and nobody uh, nobody uh, listened to, to stop the execution or anything else. He never stopped preaching. He never begged anybody. He says, no, I'm paying for what I did, but I'm going to be in heaven forever. You don't hear good news messages like that, do you? But that's from an execution. Yeah. Right. For, for, for murdering people. You say, yeah, murder people. The guy on the cross. Hello. 
three. Right? Did God say, yes, you can come down the cross because I'm going to, uh, I'm taking my blood and I'm going to get rid of hell. No, he didn't say that. Today you'll be with me in paradise. That was the holy place across from hell, not in heaven, where everybody in the hope who were dead, their spirits were there, and they saw hell. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, okay? And that's where Jesus went after he rose from the dead, take the keys of hell and death from Satan. And then he preached it, which they've been waiting for, some of them for thousands of years. And they accepted Jesus. And those people, they said they saw, were walking in the streets. It wasn't spiritual, but I'm not going to argue the point. That's not going to save you. But they did go to heaven, their spirits at least. And maybe they're waiting for the body. I don't know. I'm not going to argue this point. Because I know how the the uh, the lying uh, people who call them Jews, uh, Jews but are in the synagogue are saying, why? How, how do you know they're a synagogue thing? Because they don't believe in Messiah. Do you hate them? No. They're like the rest of the world. I don't listen to him. If I listen to him, I listen to like I'm listening to somebody in the world. You know, they tell me, uh, oh, the Bible is this way and that way. And I, you know, Holy Spirit, or is it right? You you get a check in your spirit. You know, it's not, it's not some, I got to read 20,000 books and I have to go to this guy. And they, oh, you, you can learn any way. But Paul, who had all that knowledge, the top of the top of the teachers, everything else is documented in the book of Acts. For, what, 17 years before he went on the evangelist trail. Before that, he was just going in to sing by what he wrote in, or did in, in the books of the uh, book of Acts. What's a mystery? What's in your life? Are we going to talk about what, you're, uh, what you were uh, uh, before you died and, and got born again? Or are we going to talk about your life in Christ? And if we talk about your past, it's just to point out how bad it was and that when you came to Jesus, it, it, it all changed. If it didn't all change, then something's wrong. And in ministry circles, hmm. because I talk straight and, and like this, uh, I, I've had them come up to me and, and, and these, are, these are other people. I can't tell you how, how especially Hollywood people, they... Uh, they know how to lie. Say, so, hey, after the program, uh, one of them said, hey, well, why don't you come over? We'll have some drinks and talk about all this BS. But you saw him on the channel and the, the head of it just ministered to him and he said he got born again and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm not angry with that. I, I was praying for the guy, but I didn't go with him and have drinks. So what are you saying, Joe? I'm saying be concerned about your own salvation, your walk with him, learn his character. The devil's going to attack you and miracles are going to happen. And when we die, we're going to go to heaven, not to hell. And it's all about Jesus. Without Jesus, it ain't going to happen. We wouldn't even be here. And it's his love we're here. Why, how, and what, whether I ever know it or not, that's immaterial. It might be awesome, icing on the cake, but I find head knowledge and wanting to be God is the biggest hindrance to people going to heaven who say they're Christians and are not. And I'm not judging anybody. Get over the past and all the tricks of the enemy that he tries to shove in your face and try to make it good and be God. Are you saying don't make it good? No. If you can, you can. But live each day. If you can't do it, and, and you're going to make yourself and everybody else in the world be honest. I told the people in the business stuff, I said, well, it's not working out. Uh, you didn't hold this. I didn't. It didn't work out. The enemy's after both of us. And, and, and so it's a bad deal. And they get devastated. And what's that tell you? They were expecting you to be God. Hello? Does that make sense? And then there are people who, who, who drink to excess and uh, do drugs, do sex, do whatever, you know, being right, being good, <laughs> excess. Yeah. 
being an image, acting, whatever the story is. They know what's wrong. God knows it. You know, come on. So if you get to be honest with God, know his character, talk with him right now, whoever it is. Hey, we had the heart puzzle. We didn't. Our heads are getting chopped off. Pa Pastor Sandy just said this and this didn't work. Well, Pastor Sandy isn't God. He's honest. He may so, yes, he's adamant. He's strong. Why? Because he has to be. Because he deals with himself. You have to deal with yourself. And what's Jesus say? Die to that self. That's the best way to survive. Die like a piece of wheat so you can, you can come up something new, a butterfly. I don't like it because we get into a really kiddier philosophy and stuff. But anything that takes God off the throne. He said it's this way in the Bible. Take it for face value and ask him. Ask him. And if you ask him, be responsible to do what you can when it comes up in front of you. And keep talking to him. Keep asking him. And he'll put you in front of the very person or thing or whatever you need to see. And then you have to discern, does it match his character? If you're arguing about the character of God, you have a real problem. The devil can put any delusion in your mind that he wants to at any time. Sorry. Ever met anyone who said, uh, uh, this is what happened? Uh, that's not what I believe. I said, hello. <laughs> I was there. You were there. This is what happened. Yeah, but I don't believe. I don't believe that. Literally. I was watching a, a YouTube yesterday. Person uh, on the YouTube, uh, I, I would say it would be fake and phony and CGI or something. But I met people like this. It's not fake and phony. This gal, um, she was, I guess, coming off of, uh, I don't know, out of a rehab or a, uh, hospital uh, she was in there and and I think it was a psychiatrist or the officer we didn't know and he says uh, well you're awake now and are you okay he says well you had an accident and your car's been impounded and she says well I, I, I need to go to uh, school and she's about 20 something to 30 right in there I would guess and I look very sincere and cognizant and, and all she said, I, I need to go to school. And he says, well, you, you can't because your car's been impounded. And she says, well, then I, I, I have to find a way to go to school. He says, the, the reason you're here in this facility is because it, it, you're being held because you ran over two people and killed them with your car in this accident. And um, she looked right at him said uh, uh, does that oh, uh, does that mean I can't go to school I, I need to to go to school he said did you hear what I just said and no reply he said uh, he went on and there's millions of these kind of people out there right now only Jesus can wake them up only interceding in the spirit and what you want to do is be ready that you don't fall into this category by whatever. Uh, how can I do that? Well, God warns you about something, he tells you about something, and you just want to go ahead and do it because of whatever. You don't want to go to the Creator. You don't want to ask Him. You want to solve it yourself. That's what suicide is. The most selfish act you can do. I don't want to go through the pain. I want to. Well, there was no pain there. It was. Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. But are you trusting Jesus? He's the only door. He's the only one that's going to put you into heaven. You can tell me whatever you want to do. You can complain about all the bad preachers, good preachers, uh, religious preachers, uh, cult preachers. Who cares? They've been there since the beginning. One form or another. That's rebellion against God, not doing it his way. He plainly shows in the Old Testament and the Torah. Not the tradition of the elders. Those are a big book of opinions. Some truth, some lies. Stay away from that tree of good and evil. Stay with Jesus. If anything else and you don't understand, just go to the Gospels. What did Jesus do? It's a trite saying, but it's very true. When you say, what did Jesus do? You're relying on the character of 
Yahweh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he'll lead you in truth, amazingly, out of cults, out of Satanists, out of everything. And when you speak, people come, come to and want to meet that person and say, yes, okay, fine. If miracles happen, that's immaterial. He'll confirm his word to that person. But if you think it's because of you're so hotty totty or you're 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 that you've arrived, you know, he knows that'd be bad for you. Because you're not God. Okay? Because it's God in you doing all those things. And so that's why we say in Jesus' name. And if we say, get up, yeah. Okay, in Jesus' name. Okay, covers the base. And then if you just act and do things like Jesus, the way you conduct your business and to the care, fine. And you can't tell me you don't know when you're doing something wrong if you're born again. You're under conviction. But but it's because of this, and because of that, because of the ifs and because of the, you're buying the past and the future and you're not living now with the creator and he says i'm the god of i am he tells us the future so he shows there's there's an end to all the evil and it shows his character and how he's giving chance after chance after chance for everybody so hey what i should do shouldn't do if i miss it just keep going to him and you'll make it you have to have self-control discipline his character doesn't change why doesn't he do this and that? He's God. He's a father. He knows best. Just follow him. If you feel guilty about something, it's not him putting guilt if you're doing what he said. Where do you get that? Well, I think we should give all our money to it. Well, you know, he does. You know, I, I can cherry pick also. But oh, how did I learn about giving? Well, let's go to a guy named uh, Peter. Okay. When the first church started, uh, this guy sold his property and stuff because everybody was selling everything and they shared it with everybody. Most people don't know how they did it because they haven't grown up in agricultural communities, especially in the Jewish culture at that time. And they didn't understand that these guys were good managers. Okay, Part of their thing was the prosperity gospel. If, if you were had money, you were godly. Okay, So that, that they knew how to do that. They've been trained all their life and God was guiding them. But how do you know all that? Because uh, he said uh, they purposed in their heart not to trust God and hold back part of the money. They wanted to be God. They didn't trust God. Why? They purposed to hold back some of it. How do you know that? Because Peter says, what made you hold back the, the money? It was in your hand. You didn't have to give it. There was no rule. But you wanted to look godly. And it was fake. And you didn't lie to, to me. You lied to the Holy Ghost. And when he said that, boop. And they repeated it to the wife. Well, why would you do that if you know she was going to die? Well, because the Holy Spirit wanted to make a point. Is you can't fool God. And you better know that it's a very serious thing to be born again. You're the son. I hear it all the time. I, I, I born again, and whether you were a Jew before or whether you were whatever before, it doesn't matter. When you get born again, you're adopted. Okay? Even the chosen people. All right? They're adopted. Where does it say that? Read the Bible. I'm going to tell you. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about backsliding and missing he heaven because you, you, you want to go back to that same way of thinking and reasoning and listening to the devil. And he's got a crack in the door and your salvation is laying on the line. And God's done all these miraculous things for you and everybody else around you and miracles and what have you. And, and you're ready to throw it away because uh, you're in a pity party. You want to be right or upset because it's taken so long or it's hard. It's this or that. How ridiculous is that? But the devil's pulled that card and, and taken a lot of people with him over the ages. Well, why are you talking like that? Because we're close. 
and I want to see everybody make it. Oh, you're 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 pretty mean and rotten. And you're yelling and that, yeah, that's that's harsh. Well, I don't know what's going to wake you up and help you walk the straight and narrow. Well, you're just saying you got to walk on eggshell. No, just just be serious with all your heart, mind, and soul. And it's a fight to the death. It's a fight to the death to go to hell. It's a fight to the death going to life. It's serious. You don't have to get ulcers about it, but quit trying to be right in your own strength. Quit trying to be God. Quit trying to be religious. Just follow the Father, follow him with the best of your ability, and chill. If he tells you to be quiet and rest and, and just read the word, do that. If you're going to go into excess, too much sleep, too much work, too much this, he's he just gently trying to show you it's a walk, not a race, a walk. Uh, Paul uses the deal race because he's talking to mainly people all familiar with the Greeks. It was all about bodybuilding and doing this and doing that and winning the race. So he was relating. Not being the best you can be. It's being part of the family and doing what the Father tells you to do by his spirit. He's given us everything of heaven. Why doesn't he do it all now? Because we're still in this corrupt piece of, of uh, flesh called the mind and the body and the emotion and all this stuff. When we get the new body, it's documented in, in Revelation. Ain't going to be none of that. But we're not there yet. I mean, look at it. Do you think man, no matter how good they are, can change this world? Why haven't they done it for 6,000 years? It's simple. And if that's what we're supposed to do, why didn't Jesus do it right there at the cross? He came back. He paid the price. He's God in the flesh. Why didn't he do it? Why didn't he show us to do it that way? Just a question. He says, you follow me. He said to Peter, well, he said, what about John? What's he going to do? Because he knows he, 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 he was close and intimate, you know, loved him just like, a, oh, man, just, uh, you're the best. I just want to be with you. I just want to, you know, hold your hand. Just thank you. Thank you, Lord. I love you. But what he says, don't worry about him. You just do. What, what I've given you to do, what the Holy Spirit's given you to do. Just do that. And help those, not being harsh. If you have a job, do the best job you can. If they ask you to do something against God, then fine. But don't argue with the boss. He's paying your, paying your check. If he tells you to go out and abort babies and that, say, no, I've got to do something else, Lord. I need some help. A lot of people have done that. No, well, not the majority, but a lot of people have lost their jobs, lost their money, lost their families, lost everything for doing what's right. That's in the natural. I can't judge them one way or another. But that's not the issue. If you're following car, the, the character of God, and you backslide, go forward, miss it, whatever, just be quick to repent and change your direction. That's where answered prayer gets done. You just want to do it God's way. Not about what you know and what your theory is and this person did that and figuring it out. That's being God in your head. That's actually rebellion. Well, this is getting pretty confusing. No, no. It's not confusing. He's God. He's the Father. He's the Son. And you know his character. Don't put your character into his. Put his character into yours. And watch the change happen. That's basic uh, salvation 101. And we all have to do it. Don't lay it off on this person has this and this person. Don't compare yourself. It's a trap. You're not them. They're not you. Thank God. I'm not God. Thank God. Wow. Wow. So I, 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 God knows how he put it all together, and his compassion is perfect. 
and uh, he's not sad or angry at this point. He got over all that at the cross. Is he crying tears for you? No, he, he gave his life for you, his own creation. Okay, sorry. Is he carrying you, uh, you know, in the sand? Only one set of footprints. It sounds wonderful and nice. No, he says he's walking next to you. You just got to hold on to his hand. You have to run back to him. He's always there. Where are your thoughts? If they were always like a lot of guys on sex every three minutes uh, for a good part of their life. Uh, just, you know, whether they like it or not, that's called obsession. Mind. You have to put it down. When the feelings are there, the rush is there, the memories are there. But remember how many times that God saved your life in every kind of situation when you were dumb, young, dumb, and stupid? You should have been done in a hundred times. That's before you even know, uh, accepted Jesus. I know I did. And, and, and I tried to live a good life. I tried to do what was right. You know, when I was doing things wrong, I, I, I had morals. I wouldn't do certain things. You, you talk to any any uh, guy high up in, in, in any uh, gang or mafia or something like that, uh, they aren't dumb people. They know what's right and wrong. Well, how do you know that? You're judging them. It's real simple. They respect the law and all of that. Why should they do that? If they're so bad. Because they... They know they can't be God. That's that's why they turn to crime a lot of them. What? Yeah. They're told by their religion that they're God. And everything they do, they're responsible for. And they can't even ha be responsible for their own life, and they know it doesn't work. Because Satan's kingdom is always one of control, manipulation, murder, all the bad things. That's his personality. That's his character. It's not hard to figure out. But they just give up. You hear me? They give up. Say, oh, well, I'll be the worst person. I'll be. At least my family will, will get money and have this and have that. And I can take care of them. So but if I have to lie, cheat, steal, kill, so what? It's just part of life. And then they grab a philosophy or something to justify it. Make movies about it. The, the enemy makes the movies. So people aren't that smart. So, so, so. What are you saying, Joe? I'm saying you go to God, the creator, and then you'll understand that if we go to him for everything, hey, what shall I do? Hey, boss, what shall I do? What, what shall I do? Or, hey, brother, what shall I do? Yeah, Jesus, my brother. Or, father, what do I do? I know you, you, you I inherit all of heaven and earth. You've shown me, and, and I can't even conceive of that. Thank you. I'm going to work towards that, if nothing else. Do you do that? It's work. It's hard because the flesh, the mind, unregenerated mind, no matter if you're 100 years and open up 6,000 churches and, and have 20,000 in congregation. I pray for that person because the chances of him backsliding and falling away from God are really high. Because he can go to hell trying to do what's right. Did you hear that? Yeah. Trying to do what's right. So what is the main job? Know the character of God. Walk with him each day. Each day pray. Each day spend 20 seconds, two hours, whatever. Reading the word. Letting the Holy Spirit talk. Pray in his tongue, especially if you sound like a baby or uh, you know whatever. You're trusting that his Holy Spirit is speaking through your lips. Into that and say truth in Jesus name Jesus Christ arose from the dead and you see at the right hand of God and died for me uh, for his sins and trespasses then no you can, if you can't speak after that then then you have a, you're not possessed but you have a spiritual problem someplace okay you can do it yourself the reason why he has other people work with him because usually you send them out in, in pairs there's a reason because if you're with somebody who knows your character and you try to say something about God that's not his character, he's going to put it in your face. Where if you don't respect that other person, you're just going to say, oh, well, that's just him and his opinion. And I disagree. And you're in an argument all the time with yourself and others. 
you know, Ryan was you were saying, uh, well, we we put out, I read the gospel, and, and, and why haven't more people done it? They don't, they don't want to know the gospel. They want to answer to whatever it is. Tell them to go to Jesus. If he's the answer. And once they go to him, they'll want to read the gospel. They'll want to hear about particular ones. Yeah, they will. I don't throw scriptures at a person, but I'm quoting scripture all the time. Wrote a course. Uh, I didn't even, even write it. I just put it together. But I know the person. Everything was true. And I looked up at least four or five times hundreds and hundreds of scriptures. The same ones. Why? So I didn't misquote it. And, and I find people even to this day are misquoting stuff. Half truths, half messages. I have to even watch myself. That's how devious the old flesh is. So there is hope. Is it easy? No, but it's not impossible and it's not, and it can be a way of life. But we have a, a devil who's always trying to push us off the road. The road isn't a tight rope, but it is narrow and it's straight. And you're not going to get knocked over by a breeze or anything. You're just going to be kind of wandering off to a little side. That isn't the character of the new you, which is Jesus. Because ultimately, there's no us. We're all in him or not at all. And we can't do it in this flesh. And then eternity, what we're going to do, can be revealed. But I'm over here, and, and, and the whole churches and denominations are, are building materials, sending it up to heaven to build their mansion. Hmm? So you wonder why uh, in the Gospels he doesn't talk about that, any of that at all. And people are going on other people's opinions because it tickles their ears and they want to hear it. Will that send you to hell? No, but it will just change it enough where people are going to doubt in your character and then in the character of God. Hmm. Is he trying to woo us into heaven? No. He died for us. We deserve to go there. Did he try to woo the other uh, guy who was dying opposite him on the cross? No. They both were writing and deriding like all the other people for a while. We don't know how long, so I'm not, I don't even know. And uh, But the one on the one side came to his senses and says, when you come into your kingdom, that's acknowledging that he is Jesus the Messiah. Remember me. And so he says, today, today, you'll be with me. Today, in paradise. That was the holding place. Now, you'll be with me today in heaven. That's the good news. The other one, he didn't beg him. Oh, just believe in me, I'll take you to heaven. Oh, you Pharisees, oh, you're all going to hell. No, you, all, all I hear is, oh, you vipers. And yes, yes, he's trying to wake him up while he was here. He was crying. Uh, with Martha and her sister at Lazarus' tomb, not because he, he was in the grave, but because I can't. Don't you see? I'm the Messiah. <laughs> I'm the one who can prevent you from going to death and, and, and Hades forever. I'm here. I'm life. It wasn't about raising Lazarus. It was just that was a repeat of what he was just going to do. Also, he was fulfilling. The, the things that the Pharisees had put in their rules and regulations that the Messiah would do when he comes here so that they know he was Messiah. So the non-believing uh, chosen people knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was Messiah. They just didn't want that kind of Messiah. They wanted a man Messiah. They wanted Ishobeth or whatever his name. You know, was the, 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 the 
corrupt one, the evil one. They wanted a king, an earthly king, they could talk to and see and win their battles for it. Yet God was winning all their battles, but they didn't want to do it his way. Yeah, he made the sacrifices and all that because he knew he had to put put something on them where they, when they follow rituals, if they get the idea sooner or later, especially when he came in the flesh, that, that this is his character, you have to sacrifice and this and that. And it, he did it and he showed them with Abraham and Isaac, but they didn't get it. It's just like, I belong to the chosen group, so now I've got a ticket to heaven. Am I against him? No, not at all. And because he was a judge of Israel, the other ones, the, 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 uh, uh, the spiritual beings over them were demons. Over Israel was God, so judgment comes with God. And when he's over a nation, judgment comes. Because he's there. He's not a demon. That's not his character. But obedience is necessary. Not submission and approve who he is and do evil and sacrifice kids and children and animals. No, but he had to meet them where they were at. None of them were born again. So they died in hope. He had to put his Holy Spirit on the outside of them. And only one that's recorded that was inside. And then there was a couple of prophets, but this is out of hundreds of millions of people. Let's get the numbers straight. And you're in that chosen group if you're a born again believer. You don't have, you don't have to slay 500 people on top of Mount Carmel. Run faster than a chariot, stop the rain for three and a half years. But these people didn't do it because they were so holy. They did it because they kept in contact with God. That was their whole purpose in life. And they denied self, which we call uh, 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 fasting. Well, why? Because if you're going to walk with Jesus, you're going to deny the mind and the flesh of, of instant self-gratification 24-7. Bottom line. Does he give you times of refreshment and that? Yeah. Just, you know, wait for your, till you get paid after two weeks of work. We can do that in the natural. But to say, hey, uh, uh, save up for six months and so you get a down payment, you get that house or the car or whatever. God's not against houses and cars. He just wants to be first. That's all. That's who you love. Know you uh, say your spouse, man or woman, however that works out. Um, you know, are, are are they first in your heart? And when, and when something that you, that uh, is going to go against God, you stand your ground, no matter what. Why? Because you love them. You don't want to see bad things happen to them, because life's going to be changing every minute you're alive in this earth suit. Things are going to change. And if you don't have the character of God and walking in those steps, that's the sad part. No matter if you had an easy street or not, had a terrible time or not, missing heaven is worse than it all. The tragedy of all. So anyhow, um, I, that's fresh off the plate because that's what I had to deal with. And this is somebody who's been faithful. Uh, and we've had fellowship for uh, at least a decade. Pretty much consistent for showing up for 52 weeks times 10. Yep, getting off on this is right, and who's doing that, and watching YouTube channels, and I want to do this. So what's number one in your life? The gospel? Do you remember that you're dead to that? Do you want to go to back to anxiety and fear to where you were, were uh, <laughs> dead on the pavement? Had to come by, pray for you, literally. Yeah, it's real. It's life and death. Another times swelled up like a, 
uh, a balloon out of here. It's coming on there. Oh, well, I was trying to witness these. Don't they know that? No, no, no. It's all about you. That's why you get angry when, when they, uh, I say, hey, this is a high watch time, or, you know, I believe the Lord's coming back. And I have to, bottom line, I had to tell them tonight. I said, where he comes now, or you get your head chopped off, what's the difference? Are you trusting God? You believe he loves you, that he died for you. you know? okay. Or not. Otherwise, you're going to go to self, being a God, and anxiety, fear about whatever. Some people have fears about things that are, to you, almost ridiculous. But to them, it's, it's, it's real. And now, the computers and the, the enemy has made that into a fine science. Especially with, that's why pharmacia was a very important thing to this whole deal. Get people taking every kind of legal and illegal drug there is, especially things that mess with them now. Because alcohol, it's it's so slow and it's slow, it, it doesn't do an adequate job. Instead of arguing about alcohol, no, it's, it's the excess. Do you really need it? And now that they, they've been putting, I've told people this for a long time, they've been putting poisons, uh, especially wine and beer for a long time. Do you think the aluminum can thing was because of convenience? No, they had bottles all the time. It actually it, it makes their product better in a lot of instances, or whatever your better is. So what's the issue? The issue is excess. The issue is poisoning you to death with aluminum uh, and uh, or uh, uh, sulfur dioxide. In fact, a lot of countries won't even import alcohol made in the United States because of the, the poisons they put in it, and they know it, and they print it from the FDA. So are you going to fight that because you want to drink in excess? No. Is God telling you? I, I don't, it doesn't bother me whether you do or not. You want to say Jesus drank wine or whatever? Fine, that's fine. What's his character? Never to access. And then, and the wine back then was totally different. Totally, absolutely different. The way they made it, the way they did it, especially in, in beers and stuff. But the Bible says beer is a mocker and, and, and wine's a. Not why? Because there's a demon connected to the excess. That's the open door to the dark side, which is disobedience to God. So walk in the obedience side. If you never drink and you go to heaven, if that's life and death, a lot of people, uh, you know, go to hell with, with, uh, with uh, because they're worshiping uh, that half cent of aluminum in that can and the stuff that was in it. Anybody, oh, you're talking about alcohol. No, I'm talking about real time having to do it. Uh, oh, I just smoke a little weed in there. Yeah. And, and you get lazy. You get confused. You can get anxiety attacks. And then you blame it on everything else except for the very, oh, well, it has a medicine. Yeah, come on, please. Many nations have put it up there with heroin. That's, that's how devastating it is to society. Oh, well, you're going to lose viewers. Well, I've never had them in the first place. It's God trying to reach out to somebody and wake them up. I, 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 that, that is, I'm not preaching on a, a stool or something. You know, we're, we're, we're talking here, and God's bringing people who want the truth and love. So what am I going to do? Somebody joins the army and says, I don't like the masters. I, well, a lot of masters, they don't, they don't have to cuss and curse and do all that stuff and get abusive. Like construction men have to prove by yelling at people and deriding them and everything. That's a bunch of nonsense. But that's the world. So you have to make a decision. Well, oh, what's wrong with you? I had one uh, playing that game with me. And he says, well, do I have to come down there and do it for you? And I says, no. You, you know, I don't need you to slow me down. And I wasn't, you know, I was joking. But everybody knew 
you know, it, it, it was their style of, of working and all that. I didn't confront him. And he laughed and the whole crew laughed. Never bothered me again. But that's listening to God rather than race back and say, hey, you know, cut it off, knock it off. I don't do it because I'm you know, being on an elevator and people cussing and all that and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I just love you and all that. And people say, you know, so what are you getting feeling? You know, I'm giving my guy free time and laugh it off. You ever been in a church where, where you have a, a daughter or son or friend or something and you've been telling them about God and all the things that are doing wrong and, and that they just argue with you, mock you, you know, won't show up, all sorts of bad things. And you're sitting there and this minister is going up and hitting them on the head with all the things you've talked about for five, ten years. And they're, they're so, wow, you know, full attention, front row. Well, it's not about you or me. It's about God. And maybe all that was softening the ground. So when it finally clicked in their brain, it, it's going to take root. That's, that's how God works. He knows how to get around the enemy. He knows how to get around the strongholds in the flesh uh, of, of lust, excess, and, and all the things that are out there. We're in a soup right now. Soup, a terrible cauldron in the world. But he says, just stay fixed on me, and uh, nobody's going to cook you slow or fast because uh, it won't have any effect on you. But you can't go and say, well, this isn't having effect. No, you just stay in the character of God. Do what God says the best of your ability. When you have things, run to him. Say, hey, I don't know what's going on. This thing looks bad. So I'm just going to relax even though the world's crashing in on me. The finance banks are closing. Uh, 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 I don't know what to do. The jobs aren't coming in. It looks like this is going to end. Oh, the, the poisons are here. And the doctors say that. And the, the other people say that. And the other religions are saying I'm on the wrong thing. I, it goes on and on. Especially now. Why? There's always the fight at the end when the enemy, the enemy already knows he's lost. He lost 2,000 years ago. But the battle for you is when you go to heaven, whether you're taken up alive or whether you're taken up after you exit this body and the body dies in the natural. That's what it's all about. Not about how much you know, or even if you know him. But if you know him and you know his character and aren't following him, you're not going either on the Harapazo or to him. I'm glad I'm not judged. And I'm not in fear of that, but when I start to get off track, uh, God brings that to my mind through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'd rather go through whatever I have to go through and stay right with him rather than, than miss hell through feeling good and and doing religious acts. So, well, I guess uh, I, I really did ask God on the, coming back upstairs to get online. I said, should I talk about <laughs> what I just went through for the last three hours? <laughs> the good news is he smiled. Say, yeah, I'm going to stay dead to the body. See you next week. Thank you. I repent. Whoa. That's the first time I heard that. First time. Before, it's, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm doing this. And I'm blah, blah, blah. But it says, no, I repent. I repent. Because God saved his life literally two or three times in the last three years. Well, the backslide. So that's how important it is. And why am I saying that? Because the enemy is uh, not pulling punches now. So keep ourselves straight. He'll take care of the family and us if we keep him number one in that. And just go to him and, and, and just walk with him and say, hey, I'll do the best job I can. Yeah.
try to do it the first time instead of the 32nd time. That's that's my personal recommendation, but you can do what you want. I tried the other way. It doesn't, doesn't work well. But as long as you repent at the 32nd time or 80th time, you'll still make it. Because it means you haven't forgot the character, still want to be with God, you still trust him, and uh, you, you're repenting every single time. And it, the time hopefully gets shorter and shorter and shorter to where it becomes a way of life and you don't have to repent because you're not going there anymore. Hmm. If you give you a practical deal to anybody, just sit back there and, and ask out, what is the thing that, that the flesh is trying to promote the most? And boom, right in your mind, all these sins will come up. <laughs> and sit back and say, Father, in Jesus' name, show me all the good things. Wow, what a struggle. That tells you right there that the flesh isn't cooperating. The old flesh. Just saying. Just saying. And then if you're feeling bad and under guilt, that's not God. That's the enemy trying to play the guilt card on you. Or I am God card, or I can't be God card. There's a low and a high end of pride. One is that I'm not worth anything. I've got to jump off the cliff. The other is I'm the greatest thing that ever happened, no matter what I win <laughs> at any cost. Right. So just walk with them. You're, you're, if you're born again, you're in. Okay. And just stay obedient. You're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. <laughs> okay. Never give up. Never surrender. And don't don't listen to fantasies and delusions. What are they? Things that haven't happened yet. Usually generate fear or pleasure. But it's not wanting to live now with who you're with. Well, you're taking me on this wonderful trip in here, but. You didn't tell me about those vampires that are called mosquitoes. Oh, I dealt with that yesterday. Five bites. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah, it took about 45 minutes for them to disappear. But okay, I don't go out that time of day and I don't go where I went and sit and try to get a little sun. Simple. Did God beat me up about that? Have I? I kind of know. Usually we kind of know what to do, especially if you've been walking with the Lord for a, a little while. Hey, you pretty well know when you're just kicking up and say, I just don't want to do that right now. And the enemy rubs his hands together and says, yes, I need more of that. <laughs> right. Yep. The, the, enemy, the enemy will feed on that lazy spirit, right? Yeah. Right. And especially, oh, oh, yeah, that the, that word hurt me, or this hurt me. Oh, no, 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 no. I got to be right. I got. That's what I dealt with. I got to be right. I got to be. Right. I said, look, I think you're, you're you're correct in what you're doing, but if you're going to argue about that, what it means is you're you're just not trusting. You should keep your mouth shut about. It. Is it anything to do with salvation? Are you more concerned about the person you're talking to or being right? And then he made a couple statement. Well, I've been an engineer, and this is the way I think. This is who I am. Blah 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 blah. I said, no, that's not who you are. You're becoming more and more like Jesus, right? Yeah, that's who you are. The other one almost died two or three times. I won't tell you from mine. Picked him up in the rain. Couldn't even walk. Discognitive, you know, you know what kind of poisoning that. So anyhow, uh, but he comes down there and I says, wow, there's somebody who believes in the character of God, doesn't say, oh, poor you and this and that. No. And almost impossible to get him on the phone. But guess what? Who he called. He even said it's a miracle. So it's Jesus, but I happen to be there. All you guys on the line, right? It's a miracle you happen to be there to help that person. They're not going to talk about what's right or wrong or what's in the Bible. They're going on your character. And are you really doing that? If you can 
you can say, hey, go in the Bible and find it for yourself and, and, and see that that's the character of God. What you're liking in me is, is, is the character of God showing through me, okay? And he loves me. He's my creator. I've always, he wants us back in him, not a separate, but he wants, it, he wants the move out of love. And, and, and just because of what you're going through isn't your God. That's the flesh is going to hang on to that. But when God helped me pass the few situation, he just pointed that out. When he, he says, okay, let's go, let's go down with David. You know, everybody quotes him and loves this and this and that. But he, he wasn't a success in the world at all, other than winning the, God winning the battles for him. But nobody wanted to do what what David won. They stayed with him because he won battles and that, but he was with a bunch of rebels. What was the main, what was his main asset? Oh, well, he, he, he chose him. Well, he knew the, the character. He was banking on the character of God. Why? He said it. And there's times he disobeyed big time. Have, have, Tens of thousand people died because you committed a, adultery in your mind. David did. And then it turned into an action. Have you numbered the people, which he knew? He knew was wrong. And there'd be dire consequences for it in the Torah. He, he, he memorized it. He knew it. But he trusted in the character of God and didn't try to wiggle his way out of it. With him, he knew God should have killed him. So he leaned on his mercy, but didn't say, well, uh, once chosen, always chosen. I've made it into heaven. No, he wanted to make it. His focus was heaven. And was he quick to repent all the time? No. Especially in, in the Bathsheba situation. <laughs> Months, maybe years. Finally, the prophets had to come to him, punch him between the face. Most people were afraid to go around him because they thought he'd commit suicide. He was in a dejected state because he'd become God of his life for a long period of time. Never wanted to go back on that one. And here's a guy who, who, who uh, had a whole bunch of wives. That, that and Solomon, I, those familiar spirits. Uh, oh, I, I bet I wish that, uh, I, you know. Wow, <laughs> I don't understand that one at all. But I understand lust. Lust and, and adultery is probably one of the most selfish things you can do. Wide open door to the devil. Those devils, you know, that guy says, oh, well, I can spread my, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, spill my, uh, my seed and, or oats or wild oats and no consequences. I meet those people all the time. Broken lives, broken families, dying them usually because uh, bitterness and anger, those spirits come along with that because uh, the people they've slept with uh, during and after being married and, and all this kind of stuff, they never repented or changed their way, they stayed with it in their mind. And uh, 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 they're falling apart physically, mentally, emotionally, every way. And they go to church, Pentecostal churches, if you want to know. Some, not all. But I brought, I think it'll warrant right here. Yeah. So finally, his, his wife was really on fire for God. Why? Because we, we went through a Bible study years ago. A bunch of series of things. She went through all sorts of hell stuff you know and he dead stare I want to do what I want to do then we, we pray for him uh, says he's going in for an operation the big C and all of that I knew when I prayed I said you know God's healing you right now and I know that in my team. and I said are you going to go do things God's way and Follow him and not adultery. Yeah, 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 yeah. After the operation, 
well, it was my exercise and it was this and it was that. And this and that. Did I know because I was God so perceptive? No, I've just gone through it with people so many times. I can recognize it. Because when somebody's full on for God, you're full on. I, I, I don't mind people who are full on for God and Adam and maybe even who knows, 90% are wrong in theology, and that, but at least they're on fire for God. I love them with all their heart. God will straighten everything else out. I know that. Just be in love with them. He's not expecting perfect people because he knows what the flesh will do. He's expecting us to stay with it to the finish until we'll be with him forever. And none of this will be remembered. Because it's not part of him. Sin is in part separation from him. There's no clause for that. There's no support. There's no anyone. Because he's good. And he's not going to have any in eternity with, with those he loves. That's part of his body. He's not going to. Uh, it's, it's in the Gospels. But if people say, well, show me and do it. No, let him show you. If you want to argue, you're just, you just want to. You know, I'm talking to the spirit behind it. You know, I care about it. But when you really want to know something, I don't know, but I can probably get, guide you in some things that might work for you. You know, and if I can, great. That's how, how most people that God puts me with, uh, you know, I know what they want. They want the answers to whatever, usually financially or marital or whatever. It's all flesh stuff. Very, but you talk to any any preacher who loves God, they'll say the one they almost never ask for is, is to know things spiritually, to know the character of God and, and you know how, how things work and where, where can we look at it. It's always about how to get this or get over this or something. It's not, you know, God's aware of that. He doesn't punish us for growing up in the flesh. We've been trained by the flesh, all of us. Yet God gets over most of the things in in one hundredth of the time if we'll just let him and, and, and surrender to him. But he's going to do it in the weirdest, upside down, sideways deal. So just be determined that your life's over when you come to him and, and you're a new creature and you're just going to live for him. and Watch the miracles happen. But if you're trying to hang on, uh, okay, God, I'll do it if you do this. And yeah, he'll even play that game. Who even play that game? Until you really know who he is, and then you say, Oh man. And David started out that way. A lot of, a lot of the prophets and, and people in the Bible started out that way. At the end of the day, it's the ones who press in to know him and are banking on his character and his word, who he is, and wanting really to know him at any cost. Yeah, the miracles will happen. And not because of what you do, but because of who he is, because he can trust you. When he can trust you with your trust in him, you'll get the miracles. Because he's always going to show, confirm himself in you with obedience. Okay? Knowing or unknowing. And then it then it's not even an issue. You know what to do. You know how to act like a king's kid. You don't have to tell anybody. But you're not king. No king. He is. And they know it. And when the devils get to that point, you either get peace, <laughs> he leaves you alone, or you're going to go to heaven real quick. <laughs> but either way, you're sold out. <laughs> and you go to heaven. So. Anyhow, just okay, Ryan. What do you think? Or well, oh, I got a big crowd on. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I feel led to read Psalm five. Today is Cinco de Mayo, but a lot of the things that you just shared, Joe, was um, echoed. I think in Psalm five, and, and one thing specifically, and I'll, I'll get to it when I read it. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. 
Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my faith. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Hallelujah. Psalm 5. And I was thinking, you know, a shield, a shield, you don't, a shield stands next to you. It, it protects you. And when you said that Jesus walks with us, there's, there's not one set of footprints in the sand. There's two. He goes with us, right? Which is the theme um, from our book of Acts study. So he, he says, with favor, you will surround him as with a shield. That means he's next to us. Blessing us and protecting us at the same time. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Hallelujah. So true. So true. He's next to you. Right? He does. <laughs> he wants you to walk with him, right? He. He doesn't want to carry you. He wants you to walk with him, right? There are times that he will carry you. Or is it just you're really learning what it means to walk fully trusting in him? There's a question. It maybe feels like he's carrying you, but actually you're just walking in obedience and intimacy. But it feels like he's carrying you. Hallelujah. Yeah. It, it, again, it, it's not, does he carry you? Why does he carry you? you might, you know, if, if you're a, a young man or girl or, and, and he, he just wants to carry you and you just want to hug him and, you know, you're tired or something or you're in danger. Uh, you know, your shoes worn out, your legs give out and, and uh, it's a it's it's another mile home, or you're at Disneyland and you wore yourself out twelve hours on adrenaline, and you're you're literally passed out in it. That's different, you know. We 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 are always making excuses for the flesh and the devil, but uh, he what's an experience? If he's going to do it, is is an is an experience together? No. But if you're going to do it together, it's for you 
for him to be with you in the experience, walking together, learning how to walk with him, being just fellowship. There's no way to, to, to describe love, the God kind of love. It's not, it's, you know, I hear this, the conditional, conditional. Yeah, there's always conditions to everything. Uh, good or bad, but, but, but the issue is God's ways are always perfect. And so he, he love just prefers the other person more important than themselves. That's all. You know, not to, oh, I'll do everything for you and put you on a pedestal. No, 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 no. When it comes down to, uh, gee, you're, you're worn out today or you're praying and the Lord says, just tell her how much you appreciate doing the laundry. And, and, and when she goes shopping for, uh, let's say, dresses or just goes out to look at uh, furniture or something and goes into 400 shops and prices everything and does it, but just enjoy the time with her and, and learn to, to like what she likes, okay? I'm talking about man and uh, husband and wife. Uh, in relationship, is it based on sexual drive or winning the race or or what you project or you want, or is it just you enjoy being with one another? I hear this from guys all the time. Yeah, well, you know, I feel the love in this. I said, well, let, let me ask you this: um, you're you're uh, you're a man's man, right? Yeah, that's right. I says so. When you have a, a, a man, uh, a good friend, a real good friend, I, I'm sure you just get on the bench and like to cuddle and kiss. And, uh, and uh, oh, well, you know, the world will tell you, well, why not go all the way, Steve and, and, and Sam? Well, you're being ridiculous. No, I'm not. That's not in God's word, but the reality is, what's that have to do with sex under the bound of marriage where you committed to a life together like god has committed a life he gave his life for us so that we can have a life together with him in the journey and you can be a support he's a creator wow how can i how can i what can i do to walk like you and, and do what you want he's not a slave driver he's not putting you in positions to see you hurt or learn stuff Knowing a minister or wife, uh, one I really respect, uh, uh, she said, I really thought I was a perfect minister's wife, holy and all that. So one time my husband told me no. <laughs> then all those emotions came up. <laughs> she was married. It wasn't just that kind of thing. But he, he just didn't say, yeah, honey, whatever you want. You know, we'll do it or whatever. He said, no. <laughs> Isn't that the way we all have it? Uh, as long as people are doing what we want them to do or we think they should do or whatever, it's, it's okay. But when, when the no comes up, wow, you'll know what you really believe if you really love them or whatever. You know what happens? In, in a, I, I'm talking from a counseling. I'm talking to ministers on, on this line if anybody else is listening. But, you know, everything is well and good. But do you remember the, the, the godly marriage vows of sickness and health? And the devil always comes in like, you're never going to get out of this one. You'll never have this again, or, or you'll never never have sex again, or, you know, whatever. Uh, and he beats you up and puts women half-dressed in front of you, which before you could, you could try to hit on somebody or whatever. That wouldn't work. And then after you become a Christian, they, they you know, uh, come on like, like flies. So what's the issue? It's a battle for your soul. It has nothing to do with all of that. If you do it God's way, and, and uh, yeah, you're going to have challenges. You've got to overcome it. It's like he said in Genesis. And he's not going to hit on your heart, heart uh, the things you got down, the things you're firm on. He's going to hit in your weak points. And believe me, he's got 6,000 years to figure it out. And then he has familiar spirits backing him up who've seen your ancestors. They can't predict. Well, they can 
predict in the sense of odds, but they they try to sell you a bill of goods. And if that doesn't work, they try to sell you another bill of goods and they hit on all your points all the time. So how do you get that? You get in him and he'll give you that peace where you can have periods of time, long periods of time, where where they attack you. You're not even aware of them. And they're happening, but you, you just don't go there. And it gives you, a, if it's in a godly marriage, no matter what you think, uh, I'm talking about when a, a man uh, about his wife is, is uh, uh, she's there, she's given her life and her name to you in her vows. And so she, she, she wants to protect you. And if you're not living up to yours, and oh, 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 say, I got to follow God with all my heart. Are you with me? And she'll say no or yes. But the fact is, she has to deal with her stuff too. And the fact is, is she, does she stay with you or does she dump you? She's not dumping you, she's dumping Jesus. But you don't put her in that position because things happen in life. Health fails, finance fails. You know, we come to the end of life, all of us are going to die. How many people do you talk to in ministry that worked all their lives to retire? When they retire, the, their spouse dies, their friends die, and they die. Yep. Just happened. <laughs> okay. Just happened the other day. A guy who worked his whole career looking forward to his retirement, talked about it all the time, within two years developed a brain tumor and died. Just no, recently, I, just, just the I other day, just got this uh, news. But Jesus died. Do you know where in the Bible it talks about retirement? Where, where I, I'm not, I'm not being. Uh, it's it's not a question. I mean, where it actually talks about what God thinks about retirement. You know where that there is no word in the Hebrew language for retirement. Well, no, but uh, the principle Jesus was talking about the, the fellow who was going to tear down the barns and build them up. That's basically talking about retirement. But you're right, mate. Uh, there is no retirement anywhere in the Bible. And uh, when you retire, you die, basically. <laughs> you know, you retire to heaven or hell, uh, no in-betweens, no holding place anymore. So, uh, um, but uh, it, it's about the guy who, who had the great crops, you know, who, who knows how, probably a hundred full. He says, wow, I'm going to put my stuff up and build new barns that'll keep the, the bugs and the mildew and the rats out. And I'll live on all the money that's coming in. And I got a manager who'll take care of that. I'm going to sit back and party, party, party every single day. You know, and maybe not doing anything evil outside of Torah, maybe being perfectly holy. And he says, you the only time it says, I see God saying point blank, you fool. Tomorrow, your life might be required. It's the end of the allotted time. The, the cords going up into heaven are going to be cut. Whoa, the earth be cut. That's retirement. That's what he, that was him being God of his life, retirement. Is it wrong to have a goal or? change positions or take it easier no that's that's not evil in itself but the point that god's interested in is eternity your eternity is it going to be with him because he don't want you to retire to hell because it is hell and it's for eternity according to the word there we go fire and brimstone again but it's a reality some people need to be shocked into heaven. At least they're going. It takes. So you're right, man. It, uh, it's not there, but it's, it's in people's hearts. And we were talking about suicide. Well, that's kind of a, a story that the enemy gives to people's minds about, you know, hey, it's too rough. Why not end it? At least I'll go to. But the point is, 
they're going to the wrong place. Because that's cowardice. You're with the Creator. He's your Father if you're born again. Okay? Just read it in Revelation. Oh, you're talking pretty strong. That's your opinion. No, I just read the book. Just read the book. And it's funny, at the end of Revelation, this is John. He was given this vision and that. He said, let the evil get worse. Let the right judging people, righteous people, doing it God's way, get more righteous. Much better and all of that. And it goes through the thing. Well, that's not a loving God, not caring. No, he, he understands the prayer. He's a good father. If you're not getting it, whatever way you're going, you got to reach the point that you're either going to stay with it or realize this is the wrong direction you're going. Or thinking or acting. Right? Anyway, don't want to get on a ramp. So God bless and uh Ryan, you, you, Psalm 5 was, was really right on. Praise God. Praise God. Ryan. C. C. Hey, um, morning or good night over there in, um, <clears throat> the other side of the world. Buenos días, sí. buenas noches. Yeah. Is there a night? Hey, is there a night? That's right. Um, right. Well, Hallelujah. Start, uh, Hallelujah. Uh, when we're going to start uh, Roman? And I understand now why uh, the Lord really caused us to go on a long path to get to Rome because it's the same path that the apostle Paul took, right? He was, his whole ministry was about trying to get to Rome. That was where, you know, he wanted to get to Jerusalem, but his destination was also to get back to Rome. He's a Roman citizen. When he's, when he's uh, uh, to the Romans, he's trying to uh, uh, get to them and trying to minister to the to the growing church. And it's like yeah. it's like uh, me. I'm here in Montrose, and I'm sending a letter to the church in Los Angeles, huge area, uh, or Washington, or whatever the politicians uh, reside. Uh, but it's a uh, you go from a small place and you're trying to get there, but it's just it's just not happening. Yeah. And um Yeah, and, and that was his heart. Like he he wrote Romans to the Romans because he, he was trying to get there, right? He I mean he wrote it from I think Corinth Corinth. I could be wrong, but it was like his message to the world, to the people in Rome. And uh, and he was trying to get there, right? So, that's, that's I think, the flavor of this Roman study is it's the message to the world. Same, same as him, things are happening and moving on the world. And like, like we're going to have the, the, the coronation for uh, in Charles, and uh, uh, who knows who, what that's going to do to the, um, um, I mean, as it is, uh, Christianity in Europe is almost gone, but now what is this uh, clown going to do? Is he going to be the head of the church? I mean, it doesn't get any more four times than, than having King Charles as the head of the Church of England, right? Right. Buckle up. Right. We're watching. We're yeah. Watching. We're actively engaged. Romans, El Camino Real. Oh. And I also pray for the church in Montrose because I see a, a, a true church and a true Christianity here or or um 
they truly believe in the Lord, but they're if they're not in the front like in Los Angeles or other areas, they are a little bit of a sleep. And when he comes, it's gonna come, it's gonna put him or shake him really bad because they're 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 they just don't see it coming. I don't know. It's like they're not asleep, but they're not on they're on fire, but they're not like under persecution. Uh, if I can say it that way, they're uh, the Church of Laodicea. They're comfortable. The, yes, they're comfortable. And what we were talking about the government, they see that the government is wrong, but they believe that the Lord is going to fix it and and put uh, appoint somebody to come and solve all of it and get rid of the people. And if that, they do, they do preach rapture and 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 heaven and all that. But um, it's not like it's like um, I was in the front in Los Angeles looking at things happening and like driving through homeless camps and and like all the prostitution that came down to Los Angeles, like you're driving to the streets and you're like, where am I? Like, what's happening here? And they don't have it here. It's very safe. It's very clean. And, um, right. a fortress, but they, they don't, they don't, they don't know they can be taken down with a tiny little push from, from, from the enemy. Or the Lord. Or the it's Lord. I think, I think the uh, Lord will get him out of their country seat before the enemy. That's the uh, church of uh, uh, Colossians next to uh, Laodicea. Hmm. Do you know why? Tell me. Doctrine. False doctrine. You know, Paul never went to that we have, we have in the Gospels that he never went to Colossians. But they they uh, their 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 doctrines, their philosophies were were the problem. So that's what that book was writing about, addressing this, not naming them, but addressing them. So that's the thing with heresies uh, has a. I mean, at a point where they would kill people at the stake and burn them and all that, but it really isn't just following Jesus the way he said. Mm. And and it's man's uh, replacement. And then Laodicea is uh, uh, the, the, the main church in the area that that uh, is the result of wrong doctrine. And the doctrine should be God's doctrine. Is the only doctrine, but we get into a who's right and wrong thing. But mm. if you're in God, there's only one right. Okay. right. Anyway, I well, do that. I just got to teaching on that. <laughs> so I anyway. it, it seems to be a um, a very deep but subtle warning to America. You're, you're the church in between. Huh. Flee from it because your doctrine is going to promote heresy that's going to promote people to be asleep and comfortable and seek the kingdom, right? Like it's, the fruit of that is this is my kingdom. I'm going to defend it. I'm proud of it. Yep. And this, this all actually feeds into what we're going to learn in Romans. Mm-hmm. And the question I think the Holy Spirit like preparing me to try to answer, who is Rome? Where is Rome? What is Rome? When is Rome? So deep as the Lord is revealing all this to me slowly, drip by drip. And, and the most important question is once you come, once you answer those questions, what do you do about it? Our Roman study. It's all tied together. And, and Umberto talking about what's going on in, in middle of America in the, in the hills, right? I get it, man. I'm as, I'm as American as they come. 
but if your doctrine of end times has got anything to do it, with uh, in your uh, kingdom, <laughs> yeah, run. You know, you know how the Roman has to tax Roman or Roman or tax Roman or something like that. Like you pay and you're good. You don't. We don't bother you as long as you pay your taxes. And if you don't pay your taxes, your 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 tribute to the to Caesar, then we're gonna go and get you. So here we're being surrounded. We got them there. We got a lot of area. So um, the the tax from Anna is it's just gonna last uh, for so long, and then they're gonna they're really gonna come and press their their agenda. So that's what's about to happen in the near future here. Um, wow. I don't know if it's pre rapture or after rapture. Hey. May I? May I share? Hey, Umberto, how you doing, brother? Dustin, Nate, Christopher, yeah. Joe, Ernie, uh, Miami. Um, what I'm hearing is the fact that what's happening, there's a falling away from Christ. Um, and I think at the end, um, I believe what God was showing me, allowing me to see, is as a bride, and she knows her husband is distant, the world around her will weigh on her. But as long as she's holding on to her husband and what she he stands for, she'll be able to stand. Because of the, thank you, Lord, uh, Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about it because of the weight of the world and the lust of the world is that uh, the enemy takes up the seeds. It was talking about the sower, uh, one who sows the seeds and where the seeds land. Um, it's about grabbing, grabbing and holding on to the roots of, 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 uh, the word of God for it to grab roots within us. Um, and I think that should be also the prayer that we pray for, uh, the word of God to grab roots into every believer. Um, because what's happening and what I'm hearing is that, yes, I can see how the world had a wrong mindset, but the problem is, is that people are expecting the world to go back to wrong. But it clearly states in Genesis 6 that God says, my spirit should not sh uh, strive with man for so long. And what's happening is, is that the kingdom of God is our home. The kingdom of God had came here on earth to, to preach repentance so people can be able to have the opportunity to enter in into the kingdom. The Bible lets us know that God is going to destroy this place. And another thing that I believe the Holy Spirit shared with me is that there's a time when Satan is cast down to the earth. And when I was thinking about that and God was putting it on my heart is that he was cast out of heaven first. And it shows in Job where he was going from the earth to and fro to heaven. But there, there's going to be a point where he's not even able to go back and forth from earth to heaven. So he's going to be bound, meaning that he won't be able to leave this place. And it, the question was, it's like, whoa, God, once he's cast down here and he's not able to leave this place, how much more angry would he be? And what was it about this earth that he didn't like? Even to the fact of because we believe in Christ and we're not just professing, but living. I think uh, professing Christ is one thing, but when you're living for Christ, that's very authentic. Your words don't have to acknowledge all the time, but your actions, your actions, the heart. Thank you, Lord. The heart expresses the, the, the actions. And when your actions are evidence of Jesus Christ, 
Yes, they will know the fruit. They will know the fruit by the tree it bears. So I say that to say that to see how Satan was trying to transfer that mindset. Because if he was kicked out of heaven, but the earth is the same as heaven, he has no place to go. He's caught in the middle. He has no place to go. So the Bible tells us definitely that we should, when we, what he says, uh, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is correlation between the believers who live on earth. That was the whole, thank you, the providence. I believe it's called the word providence. The whole purpose of a providence is the fact that it's connected to the kingdom. Even though that providence is at a distance, it's connected to the kingdom. But when the son has a, 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 a territorial of, of an area that he can rule, it will be the earth. That's what God had promised him. That's what's going to happen. But what's happening is there's a <clears throat> there's a bride who now has misses their husband and now started flirting with someone else. And that mindset of what Rome looked like being the other man, that's where we have to hold on to our husband, who is Christ of the kingdom. And I say that because once things start happening and there's there's a there's a distance. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Going back to the word that uh, Humberto used, a depression. You used to be. He was talking about. Um, I just had his name on um, Walter. His name was Walter. You knew about Christ, but because of what he was used to living, he was used to living with. Thanks. That's the that's the problem. The transformation, the transformation. People are not sometimes they're not encouraged to walk in newness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm thinking about Peter. There was a point in time in life where Peter became overwhelmed when he went back to what he knew. And what God is doing is to, to, to walk in the newness of what he's created us to not to go back to what it is that we know. And it's very easy to do that. So, Father God, I want to lift up our brothers and sisters who, Lord, sometimes I forgave up. Um, I, I'm trying to say the two words at one. Have forgotten, Lord Jesus, because they're overwhelmed. You talk about the seeds that are being planted. Um, Lord Jesus, how you say when they're planted and the, 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 the birds come in, pick up the seeds before you even get a chance. Um, the seeds didn't have a chance to even um, um, get any soil and and the sun scorched them. Um, and then it talks about that when a seed does grab roots, it's able to produce fruits. So, Lord, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus. Lord, as you're giving us, Lord, and I believe it's your spirit, clarity of a love and kindness, Lord. For our brothers, Lord, you tell us that if one has fall away from the church, that we go in and, and encourage our brother to come back to the to the church, Lord, to the body of Christ. We encourage our brother, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we are praying for the encouragement of our brothers so that, oh, yes, Lord Jesus, that they will be able to hear the voice of their father. Lord, you said my sheep knows my voice, Lord. Lord, and you use us at times, Lord Jesus, being the bride of Christ. To, to, to echo that voice of Christ, to let them know that Jesus loves you, brother, that you you were you were once a believer. I want to let you know that nothing has changed. Just because the world is dying doesn't mean that our Savior has, has, has died. He is risen. He is risen from the dead and he shall live. He's been given a return. Um, uh, uh, um, resurrect the body so there's no longer death can hold him down no longer that death can hold him down so lord we want to thank you lord jesus lord we want to thank you and ask for forgiveness for our brothers and sisters who have forgotten lord jesus lord we're praying for their heart lord jesus that their heart be tender lord jesus 
that they, they that they that Lord, that their heart be softened, Lord Jesus, that they will be able to hear the voice of our Father, the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, they have became um, contempt with the way of this world, even with the depression of this world, even with the uh, the, the 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 covering of the blindness of this world, Lord, they have became content. Why? Because they're saying, Lord, there's been so much, Lord, of seeing the same thing. They have been conformed to the things of this world. Lord, but we're asking, Lord Jesus, you thank you, Holy Spirit. You have given us uh, um, a permission. Uh, what is it called? Uh, a, a, a premise, Lord. The premise is, is that you've given us a promise, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you said we walk by faith and not by sight. So we're asking for our brothers, Lord Jesus, to keep their eyes closed and stop walking by the, the sight of the world, Lord. But at all last, Lord, that they hold the sight of God, Lord Jesus, and be able to see the vision of God, that they keep their eyes stayed on Christ so that way they can be in perfect peace, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you say he who keeps his eyes um Stayed on him will be in perfect peace. But you was also saying in Lord Jesus, I think in Luke, Lord Jesus, let our treasure be in heaven and not here on this earth. Let our desire of, the, uh, of things in heaven be. That's where our heart will follow, Lord, where the treasure is. So, Lord, let our treasure, Lord, be, Lord, eternal, Lord, be the kingdom of God where Jesus is, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we hold on to that because that's our treasure. Jesus is our treasure. So we know that he's in heaven, Lord. And we ask that our brothers and sisters hold on to Jesus, Lord. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for this, the, our, our brothers and sisters, Lord, who have been um, bound by the things of this world, the lies of this world, by the belief of this world, Lord Jesus. And we're asking for a healing for them, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, as, as you have taken the spit. And, and, and put it in your hands and took up dust from the earth, Lord, and created clay to cover their eyes, Lord. We're asking that, that oh, yes, yeah, oh, yeah, Lord Jesus, that you do the same for our brothers, Lord. Lord, the spiritual clay, Lord Jesus, that they do, you will cover their eyes, Lord Jesus, and you will be able to see what is it that you see. He said, the first man said, I see trees, men that look like trees, Lord. It was the fruit of the spirit, Lord. You said we would be like trees planted by the rivers of waters, Lord Jesus, receiving fruits monthly, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, it is plemishing and it's plemishing um lord so we thank you lord jesus lord and we're just asking lord jesus that we continue all of my brothers lord that are here that are listening whoever they're choosing to be a part of this this life in christ lord jesus that they will plenish lord jesus that they be encouraged lord that they be built up lord jesus help us lord jesus you said as we see the day approaching lord jesus that we encourage one another lord that we remind our brothers, Lord, sisters, Lord Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, for the love and the joy of Christ that will be forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Redeeming the time. Right? The Bible calls us to redeem the time because the days are evil. What are we talking about? What, what, what is the words that we're talking about? Right? Whatever you believe in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever a true born-again, Holy Spirit-filled believer believes in their heart is going to manifest with the words you speak. It's going to influence your actions. It's going to influence your behavior. It's going to influence your character, your integrity. Right? Uh, that's where we get the word integrated from, from integrity, to be integrated. And the word integrated, hallelujah, is so good. It means we're integrated, right? Marked by unification through a finished product. <laughs> to be integrated means that you are part of a finished product. I say it quite often. God sees us, a true born-again believer now. I'm talking about it true born-again, Holy Spirit-filled believer that believes in their heart. God sees you as a finished product. And that's what the word integrated means. And that's where we get the word integrity from. 
So whatever we believe in our heart is going to manifest and influence our character and our integrity to be integrated with Christ. Again, marked by unification through a finished product. And who finished the work? Praise be to God that Christ Jesus finished the work before the foundation of the world. Hebrews 4, 3. And he finished the work to glorify the Father. That's what we're talking about, right? What we believe in our heart. And are we redeeming the time with the words we speak? A finished product. Hallelujah. Because he finished it. Now, we reveal that finished product. We represent the Christ. And we continue to present and represent and represent and represent. We are representatives of the kingdom of heaven. That's what ecclesia means. Representatives, diplomatic officials, governing officials to the kingdom of heaven. Not just some religious bunch of, uh, 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 of buffoons, right? No. See, that's what the enemy wants people to believe. That's why they get away with everything that they get away with. That's why they could implement whatever it is in, in, a, in a lot of these states because the, 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 the so-called believers are dormant. And, and some of it is not their fault, but they're leaders. The leaders of these, of these uh, institutions and these church buildings are not empowering the congregation. They're not empowering the people. So when these things come at them, oh, we got to, oh, we got to submit. We have, no, 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 uh-uh. The ecclesia is the greatest institution established here by Abba Father through his son in Christ. He is the head of the ecclesia, of the church. So who, who who's missing it? That's why the Lord said, beware, beware. There are so many that come in my name. There are so many that profess to know me, and they don't know because I don't know them. And they're not sealed. So whatever we believe in our heart is going to manifest with the words we speak. And I was, um, I want to share this testimony, and I didn't know. Um, last, well, this, this past Saturday, the guys were sharing about something that was going on in Boston and uh, this and that, uh, and you know, I'm I'm not the type that put that stuff on the platform. Uh, so the guys were sharing about that, and uh, and I shared the the you know Ephesians one nineteen through twenty, and I shared Colossians one eleven through seventeen on that Saturday that we have the strength with uh, we have been strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, right? Uh, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? So as I was sharing that, I got like a quick rhema, dismantle. I dismantle whatever they got going in Boston. Like I said, I don't put that stuff on the platform because I'm here to elevate and, and promote the kingdom of heaven. Not what this world doing, not, not, not something that's, that's counterfeit and distorted and, and a substitute to true power. So I was, I was sharing these, the same two passage of scriptures that Saturday, and I got a rhema word. I dismantled whatever it is that uh, they got going over there in Boston in the name of Jesus Christ, and I kept on, and I kept on sharing. Uh, what was it, Monday? Either Monday or Tuesday, I was speaking to Brother West from El Paso. I don't know if he's on. Um, and he didn't know about it. And he said, uh, he said, brother, man, did you, did you hear about what happened in Boston? I said, no, nah, what happened? He said the Nazis came, and they had some, some type of uh, convention over there, and they started attacking uh, the people of that convention. And I was like, what? Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord said, remember what you declared and I told you to declare? There you go. Why? Because we are in governance to the Spirit of God. And when he gives you a word to declare, let's believe he's going to see it through. Because we're being governed by the Spirit of God. 
And there's power in the words we speak because, like we just read, it's his power. Exceeding power. And then he shared that, and I shared, you know, I shared with him what, what it was that I declared. And like, well, there you go. And also, uh, Psalm 37, 14, 15. The wicked have drawn out the sword, right? They drew out their sword that Saturday. They're going to spew their, their foolishness. But we carry a greater sword. We carry the word of God. And it should be in your heart. So when we speak, right, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In his heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with his mouth makes confession. So, yeah, they drew out their swords. But I had the power of attorney from the kingdom of heaven to declare I dismantle that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because it's his power. Look what Psalm 37, 14, 15 declares. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bows to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Upright. To be righteous. We speak righteousness. We declare the word of righteousness, right? Or Hebrews 5.13. A lot of people just need to be taught again on what that is. A lot of people call themselves teachers, and y'all not really teachers. Because <laughs> y'all don't have the word of righteousness. In your mouthpiece, you speaking something else with no power. Okay, hallelujah. Their swords shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. That's what happens. See, the enemy is going to stumble and fall on his own sword. Why? Because the word we speak is greater because we have the power of attorney to speak and declare. He's given us that delegated authority, power, and dominion. Everything that Adam gave up and relinquished, we now have, and it supersedes anything of this world in Christ Jesus. Because we are integrated with him. And we have his character. And we have his image and likeness. The true image and likeness. Which is, that's in Ephesians 4.24. Put on the new man, which after Christ is created and which after God, Christ, is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we put on the new man, which is Christ. And we put on his character. And we are integrated. With him. Because we are a finished product. So I just wanted to share that quick testimony that when you believe in your heart and you declare it and, it and 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 the Holy Spirit prompts you, it will manifest. And this brother, without knowing, he, he just started sharing that. Man, you heard what, you, what happened in Boston? No, what happened? Well, the Nazis came and they, they overthrew some demon convection they had. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Huh? Did I pray for 20, 30, 40 minutes, 50? No. I just got the word from God, right? Jesus said, I only speak what the Father gives me to speak. And as I was sharing those verses that I just read, that it was his power, that was his mighty power, and that exceeding power is, is, is toward us that believe. And he said, dismantle that stuff. I said, okay, Abba. Okay, Daddy. I dismantled whatever they got going over there in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whoever was on, on that call that Saturday, I, I guess you guys remember what I'm talking about. If you wasn't there, um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but this is to bring glory to him. Right? I heard from the Spirit. I declared the word because he's going to back up his word. Right? Because he's given us that power of attorney to execute and enforce the word of God here on earth. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're just in the religious box, just like everybody else is, with no power. But we have the power. We have it. But do you believe it? And the brother said the Nazis came and they dismantled that junk. They, they got into it themselves. Yeah, because the enemy's going to fall on his own sword because he cannot overtake the Spirit of God and the power that comes from the kingdom of heaven. Never. Greater is he that is in me than that who is in this world. And that's what you've got to operate, right? And what frustrates me is these people that do not empower their congregation because everybody should operate under that. 
But that's why Jesus said, beware, not everybody that say, Lord, Lord. That's why we got to test every spirit. Antichrist spirit is right in your face and don't know it. Because you, you become so used to it that it sounds godly, but they have no power. Second Timothy 3, 5. Having a form of godliness, but they deny the power. From such, turn away. They deny being governed by the true Holy Spirit of God. And you either have the Holy Spirit, or by default, you have the spirit of Satan, the spirit of this world. It's simple. It's just that simple. You can't be in between. That's the true definition of lukewarm. You're either governed by the spirit of God, you're saved, forgiven, redeemed, justified, the righteousness of God by faith, or by default, you're still in sin. Because whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. You can't be, I'm saved by grace, but I still have to. No. You loot one. <laughs> you loot one. You either believe in your heart. And what you believe in your heart is going to manifest in your actions. I'm not trying to get bur burnt again in what burned me some years ago whatever it was that people go through. No, because now I'm being governed by the Spirit of God. And he will keep you and convict you of who you are and will reprove you. Right? You don't got to get burned again. Why you keep going over there? But it reveals who really governs your life. And whatever you give your attention to is going to influence you and eventually going to govern your life. And that is clear now. It is so clear. Because what have you allowed to come into your heart? Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Because out of it flows the issues of life. People always got issues and issues and issues and issues and issues. What did you allow in your heart? And yes, I understand that the body of Christ, the bride, will encounter uh, persecution and suffering. We know that. But it's not lack of faith. It's because of who we are. Right? I've said it ample times, off and on, and to, to brothers I, I speak to. I know I'm a threat. I know I'm a threat to the enemy, but he can't do nothing about it. All he could do is put all these obstacles and, and barricades in front of me, but that, that don't stop. i said it before. One monkey don't stop the show. Hey, you can't stop me because greater is he that is in me. Now, you either believe that or you're going to get this right, back and forth. You're going to get tossed to and fro. It's just that simple. It's, it's not, it's not uh, 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 algebra, right? It's not calculus. What do you believe in your heart? Is your life governed by the Holy Spirit? Not, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to do? And sometimes he just flows through you. He just gives you the rhema word. Like this Saturday, I was just sharing these two passages of scriptures, and he said dismantle that stuff over there. And the confirmation I got from a brother that wasn't even on the call, and he said, did you hear what happened at Boston? No, I didn't. What happened? Well, the Nazis came and dismantled this, uh, whatever convention they were having to, you know. Amen. Because our king is greater, and we serve the one true living God, and we serve the king of glory, and we serve the king of kings, and we serve the Lord of lords. That's who we serve, not a play play God. We serve the one true living God. And when you abide in him, you will be fruitful because he is the true vine. We are the branches. We are his children that also serve and that also prophesy and that also give uh, words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Why? Because we are governed by his spirit. And we could only declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord by his spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. We bring honor to you, Abba Father. You have placed us here strategically at this moment in time to declare the truth of what the gospel is, what the gospel of truth is, what the gospel of grace and of Christ is, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven is at this moment. And Father God, I thank you. I am honored. I am privileged. 
to share the true gospel. Everything I went through is for this moment right here. To set the captives free from that bondage of sin. To let them to see that are blind, have been blinded by religiosity and everything that is perverted and counterfeit and substitute to the true gospel as written in Galatians 1. There is no other gospel. And now, Father, I thank you that Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, gave us that warning. Yeah, in this world, you're going to find a lot of tribulation because of who you are in me. And when the enemy sees you, he sees me because we bear his image and his likeness. But be of good cheer, son. Let Let not your heart be troubled because I overcome the world. And you've overcome the world because you believe on me. And I love you. And you are rooted and grounded in my love. Oh, thank you, Abba Father. Christ in me, the hope of glory. And whatever you believe in your heart, you declare. And as written in Ephesians 3.17, let Christ dwell in your heart by faith. And be rooted and grounded in love. True love. Thank you, Abba Father. I love you because you love me first. I love you, Holy Spirit, because you govern my life here on earth. And I, my Father, because of Christ Jesus, the Word becoming flesh, the image of the invisible God, God manifested in the flesh, I am reconciled to you in my original existence. Because as written in Colossians 1.17, all things exist in you and were made for you by you. And I exist because I exist in you. And I have everlasting life right now where I sit. And if I'm seated, and I understand that I'm seated, and my labor is to enter into your rest, I don't got time to be sliding. I'm seated as a king and a priest. Revelations 1.5, Revelations 5.10. I am a priest of God. Revelations 26. If I'm seated, and my labor is to enter into your rest, Hebrews 4.11. I don't got no time to be sliding. Who's sliding? I'm seated. Because you've given me that authority. You've given me that power. You've given me that delegated dominion that Adam gave us. The Radha that Adam gave us. I now have in my possession. Because you've given me the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16, 19. And all things, if you spare not your own son, but deliver him up for us all, wouldn't you freely give us all things? I have it. I have it. And I thank you, Abba Father. I thank you, Abba Father. In the beautiful, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and Savior, my King, my everything, my all in all. Amen. Hey, hey, one thing I just wanted to add real quick to what he said, and I'll, you can have it, Dustin, if you want it. Um, I was watching a, a video on a gentleman that said he had spent 23 minutes in hell. And um, he said the reason why the demons hated him so much, because he was made in the likeness and image of God. And, you know, what's funny is we can hear that a thousand times in our life. And, we, and until it actually sits in, when someone says it and triggers, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, if I'm made literally in the likeness and image of a God and he did me that and other creation hates me for it. Not that I'm like special because I say so, but the reality is, is that God went out of his way to make a, a set of people that were made in his likeness and image. And if you think about that, you're thinking I'm at least from my perspective, I'm thinking humbly like, wow, Am I falling short in this role? Am I not realizing what I am? Or the enemy has done such a good job to deceive the whole world of this particular type of people that most of them don't see what they were made and how they were made. And uh, what it should really show you is how awesome God made you if you so choose to honor that. And then how much effort Part of his creation has gone out of their way to to hide it from you, to destroy you through hiding it from you and not to make you arrogant or entitled or cocky, but 
<clears throat> to make you realize humbly, wow, I was made in favor. I was made out of a deep love, out of a, be a deep personal signature from the creator himself. And so, you know, that's just something to fathom a little bit, especially when um, George brought that up. And uh, I guess everything has to do with timing because it literally just hit me like a punch in the face when he said that. And then after watching that video the other day, it literally made me realize, wow, you know, and then so as a man that loves the Lord and a man that understands a lot of how he's forgiven me and been very graceful towards me, especially when I didn't deserve it, I hear that and I realize, wow, yeah, there, there is, an, there is a, a literal realm of entities and beings that drink a lot of hater rage spiritually and, um, and they are vicious. And I will say this one last note. I do pray against that realm every night and ask the Father to come down with his holy warring angels, protect my property, my adjacent properties all around me, three dimension and over other people I know. And I always pray that those warring angels use extreme prejudice and give no quarter to the enemy. Zero. Because the enemy has given zero to us. And uh, that may sound brutal and harsh, but that is the reality of it in spiritual realm. If the reality is, is that that enemy has deceived people into going to hell for eternity, then th there are no rules here. It is simply, we God is on our side. We call down an authority and in, in favor from him for that protection and to uh, execute that instrument known as the holy warring angels of God against our enemy. And uh, that's how I pray. Very adamant about that. So anyhow, those are my two cents. Thank you. Amen. Hey. And I go, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be a perfect guy. You guys know I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm being a holier than thou person. You know that I'm not. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is the reality of God is very real. And it says what's coming upon us is very real. And you need to be ready in your heart. So I said, there's one thing that's for sure. I am not afraid to die. As a matter of fact, I tell the Lord all the time, you can take me home anytime you want. Because I really don't care for this place. And here's the cool thing. You know, I, I've had my own version of a life after death experience. There's a man in that room, and we'll call I call him Jet Fuel Bob, and Bob's a real cool guy. He's on, he's like late 70s, and, and Bob is a good old boy from Kansas. You know, um, he he has uh, lived a very wild life, um, owned a bar. He's a real estate agent still, and actively going. He has uh, jumped out of several airplanes, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. He even was doing it before we knew him in a town I grew up in. Because we used to have uh, at Snohomish, Washington, it uh, it was known for uh, planes and, and skydivers, and he used to go up there all the time and skydive. And he would have been there doing it when I was a kid, living uh, on one of the streets that could see where the skydivers were falling. And because um, we used to watch him all the time as kids. But Bob, uh, who doesn't talk about religion, who's been a very wild guy his whole life, um, does believe in God. Does believe in you know. He, there is, you know, there's something about him that's very unique. And um, Bob set up straight up, sat there. He was, he go, and someone else said, well, Bob's had a life after death experience. He goes, yes, I have. And I, just, I don't bring it up. But since you have, I've had a life after death experience. So I got one of their own ilk to say, yes, I've had a life after death experience, <laughs> you know. And, um, and and Bob's always, he and I have always gotten along great. And, and Bob and I are kind of buddies because Bob knows I get him. And Bob gets me and um, and Bob, you know, he never walks away from me, never gives me the frown or the look. He's always in agreement. Like, yeah, I agree with what Nate's saying, man. He's he's saying the stuff you guys can't say, you know. And um, but it was nice because he gave confirmation that, I, you know, I wasn't just some nuthead radical kid to them uh, telling them uh, run for the hills, panic. That's not what I was saying. You know what I was saying is run to your creator. And um, and so it was it, it was kind of sad in one aspect for me to see how, you know, when when Bonnie said, you know, I'm not that spiritually deep. I don't know if I can handle that. And I'm like thinking to myself, how can you say that at your age when you have Parkinson's, you know? So um, I go, you know, I looked at Bonnie later when she came by me and I think she felt bad for what she said. And I go, Bonnie, I go, I'm going to tell you something. You know, Jesus himself could not heal people when they would not believe. 
I said, you got to believe. And I said, what I'm going to tell you is this. I go, anytime you want prayer, no one has to know. You can just call me. You got my number. You can call me and I'll pray with you. And she goes, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. And she goes, my sister prays with me all the time because she believes. And I'm like, okay, that's good. You know, so, you know, it wasn't like she didn't appreciate what I was saying. But what I did tell them, and I was looking right at her husband when I said this, because he's an engineer. And he's a very smart man. And, you know, he's, he's uh, I think, 80 now. And, um, and I looked right at him. I go, what you guys have to realize is that every one of us in this room have false paradigms in our head that we think is reality, and it's not. And we have to do this thing called a paradigm shift. We really have to focus on what is the deception, and why did I believe it, and how do I change this? And I go, you can't do it all at once. you got to do one at a time. But you, you need to start focusing on that so that you understand truly what's happening around you. And I think that's when that started sinking in, you can see them thinking at that point. Like they knew there was a lot of things that they see happening that they never thought would have happened. And that whole paradigm shift mentality, really, that's where she balked and said, I don't know if I can get that spiritually deep or if I can change. Well, people can change if they want to, you know, and I'm not going to lie. Um, I changed because I realized what God has done for me over the years. I've seen the evidence of it and I can't deny it as much as I wanted to be a heathen and I wanted to live life my way and, and do the things I wanted to do. God afforded me to crash and burn every time I did it. And it only, it, it, he was faithful to make sure I stayed on the path towards him. And, um, and I'm very grateful for it, but it's not an easy road. It's not a fun road. It's sometimes an incredibly lonely road. Um, but I do know this, like, um, um, Ted, who you guys got to meet, the, the guy I baptized in my, my bathtub one night, surprisingly, it was his request, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we were talking on the phone. He called me, uh, see, it's Friday, so he called me Thursday night when I was at another client's finishing up some work and we we're just chatting and he goes, you know, a dude, he goes, you know, he goes, you know, you're really hard on yourself at times. And he goes, and he goes, and I can see it. And he goes, you need to give yourself some space and you need to be okay with not being perfect. And he, and he goes, you need to, you need to be okay uh, with what God's got for you. Cause he goes, dude, I'm telling you, he goes, I've never met anyone like you. And he said that he goes, I can see God's on your side. And so whatever God tells you, you believe him. This is coming from a man who's just been born again. It's like this guy was like <laughs> had God's red cape and red boots on with a the big Y in his chest for Yeshua, and his eyes got open and he got a heartbeat all of a sudden. He jumps out and I'm the guy helping him do it. And I, I like I told you guys, I think this guy is just Ted is just gonna become one of God's uh, apostles. I mean, he is just he is a very naturally smart young man. He's in his early 30s. And he's intuitively smart and he's spiritually smart. And, uh, and he's like, he goes, and then just him talking back to me, the guy that helped him find the Lord. <laughs> it's, it's almost ironic. And I've said this for years. I go, I got a person that just comes to the Lord can teach somebody who's been with the Lord 50 years something every single day. You just have to be willing to listen and hear it. We're all learning from each other, you know. And, uh, and that's kind of what happened last night with these, these baby boomers who are all retired. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's been a lot of phenomenal things happen this week. And, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, even though the adversity of a deep personal relationship, you know, is there and the annoyance potentially of it's there, you know, I hear, I got this born again believer saying, if God told you to do something, you need to believe it, dude. And, and don't be so hard on yourself because I am, I'm, I'm very, you know, when you're an IT guy, when you, you know, when you <laughs> have that, that physics mind, that technical mind, that troubleshooting mind, it's either on or it's off, or it's either, it either is correct or it's not correct. You know, you kind of build your persona off of that a bit. And I'm sure you guys could both can tell that over the years. So I appreciate my friend newly to the Lord <laughs> saying it's okay to be human, Nate. And I guess in a way, that's what I was kind of telling those baby boomers last night. Like, Hey, you all, you all are human. It's okay to be human and not have the answers. But you're relying on what you think you know and your money, which, by the way, that money's about to go bye bye. <laughs> you know, and um, 
it, it's just been a fascinating week that way. And, um, you know, and just relating to people and, and, and I guess, and that's, that's been kind of, I can be rough around the edges as a Christian. Let's just say that. Um, and I know it doesn't put me in hell or it doesn't extinguish my light with the Lord. What has it honestly afforded me is to be personable with people who would, wouldn't be personable even towards the concept of God or discuss it openly. And I've been able to, I guess, through that notion, I don't necessarily care about myself. Um, it has drawn people out and afforded them to be very honest. And, you know, that's something Ted said to me. He goes, dude, he goes, yeah, I know our conversations aren't always the, the cleanest ones in the sense of language. He goes, but you are the most honest man I've met. He, he goes, I can easily tell you're not, you're not, you're not full of garbage. You don't lie. You're not buffaloing anyone. And I'm, I'm keeping his words translated properly here. And, uh, um, he goes, that's what I love about you. He goes, you're just raw and honest. He goes, that's the only reason I would listen to you. And I'm thinking, dang, most people won't listen when you're trying to get them to understand something because you're raw and honest. They don't want to hear it, you know? So it's just been a very, been very powerful. And I really, I'm really grateful that God has built my, um, my strength up even in the face of adversity or even in the face of maybe a promise look like it's not coming true or the world will say, you're such an idiot to believe that crap, you know, when in reality, the Lord's like, no. I told you it happened. I've shown you things that shouldn't have happened when they happened. He goes, are you going to believe this one? How willing? How long are you going to willing to go? It's kind of, I guess, it, it reminds me a lot. And I'm, do not get me wrong on this. I'm not signing it up for this party. But it reminds me of the concept of Job, right? I'm not calling myself Job by any means, believe me. But it, I understand the mind process that Job had to been going through what he went through when he lost everything. Everything everything that was dear to him that's great so you know so i've been i thank god for keeping my job experience very minimal <laughs> you know but i've also been thankful that he's given me the brain and the mind and the heart to pick up on it quickly so i don't have to keep trudging through it you know and uh you know so um it's it's uh it's not always an easy road to find the truth with the father or to understand where your walk is with him or to see uh, what you need to have your eyes open to. I don't, I don't believe there's any calamity in that. And I, and I, even when we're being Jack wagons in life and not being the most premier Christian or maybe using language we shouldn't use, or maybe having a bad attitude towards someone on the road when they cut us off. Cause I, I know a lot of people I'm like that. We all are because we get out, we get into our flesh. We all are going to have that problem, by the way, until the day we die. It's just trying to do it less and less every day, right? And, uh, you know, it's just amazing when you just sit back and you let go and you let God and let him show you and be okay with the punch in the gut. It's like Rocky Balboa, you know, it's like in the movies, you know, he really didn't become a great fighter until he started suffering pain and getting punched and getting brutalized. And then it woke him up, right? Have you ever noticed that every fight it took him to get a the beating before he really woke up and, and uh, as they say that i had the tiger came out and, and, and whooped the enemy you know and i think that's probably what it's like for a lot of people like you know how much of a beating do you take before you stand up and start speaking the truth of god and the love of god and you know you can rebuke people you can love on people you can rebuke and love on them at the same time and you can do it patiently and, and with temperance like the bible says and you can do it with the wisdom of a serpent and gentle as a dove, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a, um, it's a dance, it's a spiritual dance and it's also a physical dance. And, you know, when we're growing, uh, with the Lord and we're, um, when we're going through what we got to go through, we don't want the people around us to go through it in, in a way we don't. Because we know the the level of pain and the struggle that it involves, you know, and uh, and we we wish it if they have to go through it that it be quick, learn quickly, and so they can move on and, and get somewhere better than what you've been struggling with for ten, fifteen years, or whatever number of years has been, right? Mm -hmm. And because you, if you understand how much God has loved on you, 
you get those are God's kids that he's loving on them just as much. And you're like, hey, I didn't deserve all that love you gave me. So what can I do in my flavor of ice cream called Nate? What can I do to give a couple of your kids back to you that maybe the rest of the world couldn't grab the attention of? And, you know, I'm grateful enough to get to see you, Ted. You know, to get to see Ted, who confirmed that concept literally uh, Thursday night to, with me. And uh, so I know um, it's not about numbers so much as are you showing up to do what you're supposed to do? Are you are you letting go and letting God when it comes to your personal self, your personal heart, and as well as the people around you? And if you let him in, he's going to show you how he functions and he operates. Um, you literally can be in the midst of this ugly world. We're in this perversion, this destruction, this soulless behavior that you see the world going through right now. And you don't have to be a victim of it. You may get, you may feel like the victim, you victimhood, you may feel might be standing in a crowd of baby boomers and, and realizing, my God, I'm standing out like a sore thumb to most of these people and I'm speaking truth to them. Or, you know, maybe some of them might mock you or some of them may not invite you back to another party or whatever it may be. And um, at least thank God the woman that owns that home and she wears pants in that house because her husband's a nice man, but she wears the pants. She loves me and she is born again. And uh, so I've, I'm whenever she has a party, she's always reminding mom, you invite your son. He's come over. <laughs> so. You know, but that I'm glad and thankful at least a couple of folks there kind of picked up on things. And um, I'm glad that I made an impact on someone. I'm glad that one of their own ilk will look at, at me and say, yeah, I had a life after death experience. I guess what it really comes down to is will they go back to I, I call I call him Jet Fuel Bob because Bob used to be a bartender and he makes him very strong drinks. <laughs> so I, I tease him about I call him Jet Fuel Bob and he laughs. And uh, but I hope they go back to Bob and they ask Bob about that one day when they have him one on one, because these people are all friends with each other. They all see each other throughout the week on and off for different reasons. And I hope, especially someone like Bonnie, I hope that maybe she would approach Bob one day and say, tell me about your experience, you know, and because Bob's a quiet guy, and he just smiles and and he'll he'll um, you know, he's like a bartender. I mean, you know, we've all had those experiences, you know, we know what that's about, even in, in movies and stuff. But. Um, you know, he's like the cheers guy, you know, and, uh, and he's really not, he's a good man that way. And, uh, though he's not a perfect man, there's something about Bob I've always like, and I hope those people, and he's likable. I hope they get the nerve to ask him, tell me about your life after death experience. And, um, because these people are no longer in the prime of their life. They're in the, what they call the golden years. They're uh, fading off into the sunset politely and they need to realize that they've lived in, in decadence and they've lived in favor without realizing it and they need to first start saying thank you and they need to start saying forgive me then it should be teach me let me understand your ways right so my heart is growing properly but um i'm very i personally am grateful to the lord it's not easy um native the world would rather conquer it and destroy his enemies and then let god deal with them afterwards and god is seeing fit that no nate you're not doing that because I built you for something different. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful he rescued myself from my own insanity years ago. Um, and the road has not been easy. And I'll go back to Job. Again, again I'm not saying I'm Job. I have not gone through the, the beating Job took in that book. But um, what I'm saying, though, is I'm, I'm learning. Like Job saying, just like you said, Nate, I would say Job would stand here and say, just like I went through that, I would never wish that on any of my brothers and sisters in the future. But if they get a taste of it, then they'll know what I went through. And so I guess I can say I'm evidence of the very thing I hope I help other people with. Right. So but anyhow, I'll leave it at that. There's some gentlemen on on that can have the floor now. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, keep me in prayer. And. Uh, um, and just, you know. I just ask if you do keep me in prayer that I don't hear the voice of Satan telling me that God's lied to you, but I hear the voice of God saying, I got a promise for you. And I keep seeing those signs and those symbol in that symbology in my life of the different events that are going on that are very consistent and that I stay strong. <clears throat> and uh, like Paul said, you know, we run a race because there's one prize. So run this race like there's only one prize. And uh, that is Jesus Christ. So um, amen to that. Hallelujah.
Hey, Nate, thanks for uh, most of all uh, your present testimony. Father God, uh, not it was just his testimony, but his request for prayer, Lord. Lord, as we see the day approaching, you tell us to encourage one another. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement that you've given Nate to walk through, Lord. Lord, we thank you even for the covering of requests, Lord, that you cover his mind. That it always be your word. You said, my sheep knows your voice. So we're praying, Lord Jesus, and thank you, Lord. As you touch his ears, Lord Jesus, let them be spiritually blocked from the world. Not just his ears, but my ears as well, our ears as well. Block them from the world's, Lord Jesus, voice, Lord. And let us hear our Father's voice, Lord, constantly. Lord, cover our heart, Lord Jesus. Let our heart not be bitter, Lord. Lord, there's some areas that, as my brother was saying, but you were sharing earlier today. Lord, there's areas that we don't know that people are suffering in. Lord, fear. Um, because you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, love, and um, good judgment, Lord. Lord, and I thank you for the judgment to be able to say, Jesus, I need you. Lord, the, 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 thank you, Lord Jesus. The, the, the mindset, Lord Jesus, to say, Lord, uh, I, what did he say? Help my unbelief. Help me in the area, Lord, that I'm, I'm, I'm fearful in, Lord. I don't know what to expect. This is new. I have no understanding of it. I don't know the first thing to do. Lord, allow them to be able to cry out to you, Lord. But you said if you... If they pray in secret, Lord, you reward them openly. So we are praying for our sister, Lord. What she said is that she has a sister, Lord, but she didn't identify that sister. Lord, if she was a sister in Christ, but Lord Jesus, it wouldn't have been a problem of her accepting another brother in Christ, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you, but not judging her, but we thank you, Lord, for the, for the heart of God that has passed our understanding, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, we're leaning not to our own ways, but in your ways, we're acknowledging you. And you are directing our path, Lord, so in our acknowledgement, we say we want your direction. We want your, your voice, Lord. We want your instructions. We want to be obedient unto you, Lord. So we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you and ask that you touch our sister, Lord Jesus, that she will be able to hear your voice. You said that one waters, one um, plants, but it's you that give the increase. So we're praying for her increase, Lord, in the wisdom and being able to hear the voice of God and knowing that, Lord, she would trust you with all of her heart, her mind, her soul, and her strength. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for fuel ball, Lord Jesus, because he has the, 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 the fuel of the, the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. He has had an experience to know that you are real, that there is life after death, Lord, the spiritual realm, Lord. We don't want to accept that we walk a lot of us, Lord, used to walk, and even myself, by sight and not by faith. Lord, you're helping us and teaching us how to walk by sight, um, by faith, Lord, and not by sight. So I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I thank you for that. We're asking, Lord Jesus, that you cover the young lady's eyes so that she would be able to see, Lord, the spiritual realm, the paradigm, Lord, the, the shift that that, that, thank you, Lord, the shift that is going to happen, the shift that has started happening, the shift that was before even earth happened, Lord, that shift, which is the spiritual realm. But we thank you that you've been covering our eyes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the desire to want to see what thus saith the Lord, to hear what was saith the Lord. And we're not just asking so you can talk to us, Lord, and we ignore you, but we're asking and asking for strength, Lord Jesus, to be obedient when we hear your voice. These things that we ask of you, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. 
the wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. Hallelujah. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said? See, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight. What is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my heart saying, look, I have attained greatness and have, and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this is also grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Father, in the name of Jesus, my prayer today is for your, your church, the watchmen on the wall, those who are obtaining so much wisdom, so much knowledge. Lord, I see that their, their hearts seem to be a little downcast of late. One too many missed rapture dates, not enough paying attention to the one who's coming. Father, I'm praying that you would breathe joy back into the watchman. For with all this gathering of wisdom, knowledge, and speculation, Lord, it's producing depression. It's, it's producing weakness. Lord, we're here to breathe strength and life into the body of Christ. There's, there's no time. There's no time left for the feeling that all is lost, all is vain, all is vanity. For it is true, and those who can see it, realize it. For even today, the world created a false king, and in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, it refers to a king. Which king is being crowned? To me, I, I found it offensive. I don't want to celebrate what the world is celebrating. I don't want to go along and participate and enjoy any man being labeled as a king right now in today's times when the true king is so close. Oh, Father God, I'm praying life into the watchmen that they would breathe joy back into their ministries. They would get their eyes off the world, eyes off all this knowledge and start listening to the spirit of God leading them to get all men right with you. Like Brother Nate, he's, he's, he's out there ministering to his circle of, of friends, his household, those who was in his influence, the sphere of influence, pushing for that paradigm shift, praying for them, offering himself. Lord, I just thank you for his ministry. Lord, we're here to breathe life into the watchroom today. And I pray, God, oh God, that Ecclesiastes 1, the spirit of it would, would ring true to all those who are putting their hope and faith into anything in this world. Well, it's all going to fade away soon. And soon we're going to be standing before you. 
the only thing in our hands is what we, what crowns we can lay at your feet. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We commit this time to you. We commit the reading of Ecclesiastes 1 to you. We, we commit this Saturday to you. We commit this time to you, Father. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Breathe life. Breathe life into us. Those who would hear this message today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure that I actually, uh, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God in this, not just in direction. There's something new that God is allowing me to even say. Hear me come out of my mouth. It's the stage has been set to see the hand of God. And not that I just say it build myself up because this is new for me to even hear myself even say it. Not myself, but even hear the Holy Spirit speak through me to even hear it. And for me, there's a lot of things that have been said. See the hand of God. God gave me uh, a vision of even Moses. Uh, when I say vision, uh, 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 like a quick commercial uh, from the Holy Spirit, like remember Moses and what he was dealing with with Pharaoh. God kept strengthening Pharaoh, but each time he strengthened him, he told him before it even happened, I would strengthen him, and each time that I would strengthen him, it would be able to show the hand of God, to show the power of God. He wanted those people, even from Pharaoh and their situation, to know that he is God. He is the only one true and living God. And no matter what God that you want to uh, uh, acknowledge, um, um, become submission to, whatever, but if it's not Jesus Christ, the one true and living God, then you won't. You will see the hand of God move. So, it, it, and I say that because it's like, as being in this place, I don't have any words anymore. I don't want to have any words anymore. I thank God that I don't really have anything to say. I thank God that I'm not, I'm not broken, Lord, but I, but I, but I'm healed. And when I say I'm healed, thank you, Jesus. I, I, I'm healed in Jesus. I'm, I'm not broken. Hand, hand, and I'm for your Lord. for your Lord, Jesus. I'm not holding on to my flesh, but I'm holding on to the spirit of God, his strength, Lord Jesus. I'm holding on to him. And I thank God for that. Because it's past my understanding. It's not of my flesh. This is not something that I can do. My flesh can't even handle it. I can't deal with that. But through God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And to have an experience with who God is in your life, hey, I won't even have the words to tell somebody to, I'm not gonna say that. I can't. I can't even. I can't even allow myself to even come to that ignorance. But when you say get to know God, you better trust and believe. You will get to know Him. You will get to know Him in His suffering. You will get to know Him in His victory. You will get to know Him. How that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. How, how His name was slandered. You will get to know Him. And He's reminding me to know that my reward. And I thank God for the reward. But I'm looking God for more for. His love. So my reward right now is the fact that God, you never left me, nor you forsake me, but you was with me as I was going through. That's where my reward right now is at. But I need you now. I know that we have victory, but I need you now, God. I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. There were some things that God even put on my heart. I wonder if 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 if, if, if the post and I was asking Pastor Sandy, Sandy the post we get to our redemption, will it be Rough for us. I know that the Bible, about the Pastor Sandy was saying, well, the Bible says it'd be like a regular day for them. A regular day. And, and I get it. For the world, it would be for a regular day. But because we are in Christ and we're looking and we're watching, it won't look like a regular day. Because we know that everything else is going to look like it was okay. And I get it why people are holding on to America being redeemed. redeemed. Uh, things going back to what they should go back to. We, 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 we not just heard the word of God, but we have the word of God that is living in our heart. It's going to be like a regular day. But it doesn't change the fact that we are fighting. We are going through. God is purifying us. He's getting us ready to be that bride. 
He's purifying us. He's, he's, he's cleansing us from all unrighteousness. This morning, my prayer was, God, help me to be a, 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 a sweet smelling aroma to your, to your, unto you. I want my life to be a sweet smelling aroma. I don't want to be a snitch. Anything that is in me that is not pleasing and acceptable in your sight, remove it. I can say that boldly because I'm looking for God to do not just far and beyond, but, 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 but make me that bride. So that way I can be in a relationship, not just to see him and he can stay in her hand, but to be in relationship with him till that day. Till that day. So I'm thankful more for the relationship. I'm thankful for being able to have the Holy Spirit to, to, to walk with me, to build me up as I'm going through. For God to get on the fire with me on this side. Yes, we will see him in glory and it will be a beautiful thing. But on this side, we got Jesus. On this side, we can walk through. On this side, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Will we see situations? Will we see, uh, uh, what is the other word? Um, will we see obstacles happening? Will things be tough? Yes, it will. But God is beyond all of that. And I thank God for being so powerful, the fact that our situation is big beyond ourselves to the point where it's so big that there's nothing that can deny. There's nothing that you can say to even ignore that it was God. You know, I, I, I look at situations now and say, wow, this situation has got so big that it's nothing that I can do. And God allowed it to be that way. Why? So he can know that he is God. So I, I just wanted to share that with, that with you uh, to echo so I can hear it myself. Father God, I want to thank you for this. Your love and kindness, your tender mercy that endures forever and ever and ever. Lord, you met us here on this day. Um, as Brother uh, Miami was sharing the scriptures, Lord Jesus. Lord, this tabernacle that we have on this earth, Lord, it's only for a moment, but you have a, you have a body that was built without hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, a, spirit, a, a, a heavenly body that is in a spiritual realm. Lord, and, and it's amazing. So as he was saying that, you let me see, Lord, when you made Adam, Lord Jesus. Lord, we were perfect, Lord, without any sin. And you had a body for us. So you're the same God from that day, today and forevermore. You're still doing the same thing, Lord. You're still doing the same thing. You have not changed. You're just trying to purify it so that way when you give us a body, Lord Jesus, it can be able to be perfect, having dominion. And I believe the most beautiful thing about dominion is knowing that Christ has the order. Everything is in order with Christ. It's God's order. It's his dominion. It's the world who's trying to project something different, Lord. So I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for the ones who know you and chose to walk away. I'm asking for the brothers and the sisters who have been broken, Lord Jesus, but I have not healed, Lord Jesus. We're asking, Lord Jesus, that you remove all the bitterness, things that are happening. They say, they call it church hurt, Lord. And we're going to define it today. Church hurt is not just the fact that the church hurt them, but that, 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 oh yes, but that the body of Christ is hurt. Lord, and I know that you tell us to encourage one another, to build one another up. Well, what is hurting that we all are hurting, Lord Jesus? So, Lord, as we're hurting, Lord Jesus, Lord, and they sometimes can't read, read out, Lord, or, or, or speak out. We're speaking on their behalf and on the body, Lord, on behalf, Lord, for healing, Lord Jesus. He said, is there anyone sick? Have the, the hands of the elders to, to lay hands on the Lord. So we thank you, Lord, in this body we have the elders to lay hands on the body of Christ. Lord, so we're calling the elders, Lord, to lay hands on the body of Christ, Lord Jesus, so that we can be healed in Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you and give you praise, glory, and honor for these things that we ask for in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. Good stuff. Hallelujah. We only glory and praise. 